into the state playoffs with their electrifying running back, Jeremy Braden. And the Indians are led by veteran coach Jerry Boyce in his 40th and final year of coaching. Fort Osage going to try to keep their coach's coaching career alive tonight as they take on Blue Springs at home. Blue Springs has been one of the surprise teams in the Kansas City area this year. Rated number four in the Metro Sports Bowl. They're 9-1, and one, and they're only lost to Rockers in a close one as they start a new era at Blue Springs under 33-year-old Kelly Donahoe. Fort Osage, Blue Springs next on Metro Sports. Welcome to a cold, wet, and slushy Fort Osage Stadium. As tonight, Metro Sports presenting Missouri 5A state sectional playoff action as number four, Blue Springs, taking on eight and two, Fort Osage. Hi, everybody. Kevin White with you here on the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports. Well, first year, Blue Springs coach Kelly Donahoe said, I thought we'd be competitive this year. We might surprise some people, but his Wildcats have surprised a lot of people, including their coach, going 9-1. and one, Their only loss, a close loss to Rockers, and they're back in the state playoffs after a two-year absence. Another surprise team has to be Fort Osage. Last year, just 5-5. Five and five. This year, 8-2. and two. They returned to the state playoffs for the first time since 1995, but an injury note to talk about with Fort Osage. Jeremy Braden, their all-star running back, has a hit pointer. He will start. The question is, how long can he go tonight? And when you talk Blue Springs football, they have a new coach, and their quarterback has been outstanding this year. That is junior Justin Whitworth. He started the season as one of the guys battling for the starting positions. All he's done this year is throw 18 touchdown passes with only seven INTs. And as far as Fort Osage, we've already mentioned him, Jeremy Braden. He set the school record for yards in a season and touchdowns. A tremendous player. There you see it. 1,481 yards and 31 times in the end zone. He is also only a junior. It's Blue Springs and Fort Osage, Missouri State sectional football here on Metro Sports. Bundle up. It's going to be a cold one. Back with our opening kickoff right after this. And the high school game of the week here on Metro Sports brought to you by High V. Your Kansas City Metro Farmers Insurance agents, including Kevin Hornick, Bob Hoop, Chris Cooper, and Roland Fowler. By AMC Theaters. Culligan, water for life. And underthescope.com, realize the dream. We're at Fort Osage. It is cold. It is windy. It is wet. The field is like a big slushy tonight. But we have Missouri 5A state sectional football. Fort Osage taking on Blue Springs. The Wildcats won the toss, deferred their option to the second half, and they will kick off. And Kelly Donahoe, the first-year coach for the Blue Springs Wildcats. You may remember him as a KU football quarterback. He was an outstanding quarterback. All Big 8 honorable mention. What a job he's done. An impressive record. And Jerry Boyce in his 40th year of coaching. This will be his final year as the ball is kicked off. Justin Buckaloo with the return up near the 13, make it the 14-yard line, and that's where the Fort Osage Indians will take over. Jerry Boyce, the legendary coach of his uh, fedora, and a man that's been an offensive coordinator in the college ranks, such places at Kansas State, Indiana State, Wichita State. He's also coached in the JUCO ranks and the high school ranks, but this is it. This is his final year of coaching football he'll finish out the year he'll also be the golf coach and then he's headed off to Branson he and his wife Marilyn have been married 41 years they're gonna retire play some golf and do some fishing down there quarterback is Talamo for Fort Osage there you see the numbers this is a predominantly running team as they work out of the eye formation here on first and ten from the 14-yard line Braden with the call and 
carries a couple of tacklers for a gain of two on the play. Here's the Fort Osage Indians offensively tonight. Up front, Goodson, Seamer, Waldman, very good center, Redmond and Shepard. Running backs will be Braden and Harris, Sepulveda, Hannah and Buckaloo on the wideouts. Second down, a long six here now for Fort Osage. Ball at their own 17-yard line. Inside trap play, the fullback there, Bruce Harris, across the 20 to the 21-yard line. It'll be third down, and they're going to need about four yards. Defensively for Blue Springs up front, Earl Jack, the man in the middle. He is something else. Scorpio Horn, Roderick, and Rogers at the ends. The linebackers, Defoe, Schwope, Beyer, and Hawkins. In the secondary, Barge Glover leads in interceptions, and he's a big hitter in Troy Pike. It's going to be third down and about three yards to go, and Stan Weber joins us on the broadcast. And Stan, Fort Osage likes to run the football, and the you know, weather's inclement like it is. You got to like a team that can really run the football here as the quarterback will option Mo keeping, and he's going to be tied up well shy of the first down as shooting through number 75, Earl Jack. He is something else. His brother, James Jack, goes to Missouri Western, and they say this guy is a big-time prospect in the middle, number 75. And he had a lot of help on that play because they were playing run defense all the way. They had a run blitz on. They took every gap, had the linebacker step right up, and they had every gap taken, and the first big third down of the game does not go for Fort Osage. The Blue Spring Wildcats hold and force a punt right away. Fourth down and one. Jeremy Braden, also the punter, averages 35.7 yards per punt. Middle, 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 middle. And a short punt, and takes a Blue Springs hop before it's touched down by Lance Moore. And the ball will be at the 42-yard line of Blue Springs after a very short punt of 22 yards. Justin Whitworth, the quarterback. This was a young man that was, you know, fighting for a job at the beginning of the year, but he went to a quarterback and receivers camp in L.A. put on by Dr. Will Hayes and Kelly Donahoe said since that time he's come back with a new attitude 18 touchdown passes only seven INTs after the short punt first and ten in Fort Osage territory is Whitworth to throw swing pass this is Andrew Tuggle got a blocker in front and Vaughn breaks him free down the sidelines Tuggle touchdown Blue Springs 43 yards, and the Wildcats on the board first. I'll tell you what, there's a bad weather out here tonight, and that's the way to start out. If you're going to want to throw the football, throw the ball safely. And they did right out to the outside. Andrew Tuggle caught the football basically four or five yards in the backfield, but it was great blocking out in front. The fullback made a key block out there, blowing the sideline wide open. And Tuggle shows his explosion of right down the field. And on the first offensive play of the game, Blue Springs has six points. Danny Watkins in to try the extra point now for the Wildcats. Flags will stop this play in mid-motion. Referee tonight is John Schindler. You know, Kevin, the weather is very bad, but it's not as bad as it was three or four hours ago. But it's, there's no rain or ice coming out of the Dead sky ball. right now. Encroachment defense. And the field's very icy. The footing's going to be something to, to deal with. But as far as quarterbacking and catching the football, what you don't want is the ball to be getting wet while it's in the air. And fortunately, it's cold, it's nasty, but it could be even worse. It was a couple hours ago. Well, we'll move back. actually move up half the distance here and Danny Watkins sends it through it is good with 931 to play in your first quarter one play Whitworth to Tuggle and the Wildcats lead it seven to nothing here here you see it's a simple play it's really like a sweep play because you just toss the ball outside and then you get the key blocked by the fullback the bounce out right there and you see number 40 in your picture he makes a big block Joey Vaughn 
And you can pitch out the football or you can throw the football. But watch Joey Vaughn, number 40, right there, make the crunching block. That's what you would do with a sweep play. This time it just happens to be a pass. You can get the ball out there a little bit quicker. And then you speed down the sideline, Andrew Tuggle. Great blocking is the key to touchdown plays. And it's a textbook block by the big fullback. And it's the perfect start for Kelly Donahoe to get his team out there with the win in the ball game, force a three and out short punt, and then throw the little safe pass and end up with a 7-0 lead. And as the weather gets colder and colder in the evening, getting off to a quick start, an early lead is so important in a playoff atmosphere like this because as the cold weather comes in, you know, it's really the first time these players have had to deal with this this year. And it's tough to come back when you're way behind and the wet ball is all wet. The ball will be wet after that kick as he sends a squibber down the field, and Justin Buckaloo will take it across the 20 near the 22-yard line. First and 10 for Fort Osage and Talamo. Talamo now has to get his offense circled up and get some things happening positively. It's very important after you've been scored upon to at least get a few first downs, change the field position. You may not go all the way down and answer with a score, but you need to change the field position, get a little momentum, give the coaches time to talk to the defense and get them set up. You're in shock when you give up a one play touchdown drive to start the season. The playoff season, I should say. Inside give, Harris. Chugs for a hard three yards, a little dive play. Bruce Harris, the fullback. Kevin, something to watch in this ball game. When you get a lot of activity on a field like this through warm-ups and then play, the field's really gonna get torn up and the footing's gonna become very tough. And usually that's gonna happen on the wind that's at the end where the wind is blowing. And what you find right here is down on this end of the football field with the wind going this way, probably gonna see most of the game played right here in this part of the field. So let's watch that as the game develops. Porto Sage working against the wind here as we play in the first quarter. Second down and seven yards to go. Braden in motion. And once again, they give it to Bruce Harris, the fullback. And 118 yards last week in their win over William Christman. He'll get a short gain there. Coach Jerry Boyce right now seeing the run blitz. He's saying if they're gonna fire their linebackers, what we need to do is just get a little crease right up the middle. Now you may not gain any yardage if Blue Springs plays it correctly, but if you can just bust through that first line, then that run can turn into 20 or 30 yards. So far it hasn't worked because of the great defensive play by the interior defense of Blue Springs. Third down and five now. Play action. Mo, the left-hander, gunning deep, has a receiver. Oh, and hung up in the wind and came up short, incomplete, as he was looking for the fullback, Bruce Harris, and the ball dies short, and it's going to be fourth down and five now for Fort Osage. Boy, they had the perfect play called right here. Fake the fullback up the middle, and see the fullback slipping out, number 22 running right down the middle of the field, wide open, but throwing into the wind, the ball comes up a little bit short. You see Nebraska doing plays like that, slipping out the fullback right down the middle of the field. Sometimes he'll end up being the most open guy. Just a missed opportunity there on the short throw. Punting time now for Jeremy Braden. He back is Joey Moore for Blue Springs. He feels this one at his own 49. Nice move, Joey Moore. Takes it inside the 40 near the 36 yard line. It's a 15 yard return after the 25 yard punt by Jeremy Braden. Let's set the offense now for the Blue Springs Wildcats up front. Taylor, Case, Cade, Jack, and Scorpio Horn. Backfield of Troy and Vaughn. Receiver, the best one is Josh Barge. Although Joy Moore had 58 catches last year, Ian Pennington, he will play what's called their Z receiver. Call the receivers X, Y, and Z. First and 10 now for Blue Springs out of the I formation. Leading seven to nothing here. Andrew Tuggle into the secondary. Andrew Tuggle with a nice gain and a first down pickup to the 22 yard line as he goes for 14 yards. Andrew Tuggle's doing a nice job of blocking, but there are blocks up front. The big offensive line opening holes, a trap play. And there you see your big fullback, number 40, leading the way. What you do as a tailback is you follow the fullback. He'll lead you to the play. Joey Vaughn on a counter tray type move. Watch Joey Vaughn. He's a running back. Says, follow me, follow me. Boom. I'll block, and then you take off. A tailback just needs to follow his fullback, and he'll find daylight. First and 10 now for Blue Springs. So Andrew Tuggle getting the surprise start. Jeff Troy 
normally starts. This is the fullback getting awarded now with a carry. And he carries tacklers for a two-yard gain up to the 20-yard line. Joey Vaughn, a guy, stand that they had to talk into playing football. Last year, they had to run and shoot, and he wasn't real, you know, integral part of that. Run and shoot, fullbacks are not as big. They said, we talked him into it, and he's really fit in well, says Kelly Donahoe. Well, that's one of the subtleties of being a high school coach, is talking kids who have a lot of options and a lot of things going on. It's tough to come out to the football team, and you say, come on, you got to talk certain players into playing, and may, that may be the difference between being a state quality team and not. And this time he did a great job of talking. Joey Vaughn has been a star player so far in this game with the great blocking. Second down and long. Joey Moore in motion. Now they pitch it out to Andrew Tuggle trying to turn the corner. Lance Moore with the angle and trips him up by the ankles, but he has acquired another Blue Springs first down. Just great speed to the outside by Andrew Tuggle as we take a look at the defensive starters for Fort Osage. Waters, Robertson, Hyde, and Hannah up front. The linebackers, Lance Moore and Chris Johnson and Jared Stevenson, their top tacklers. Reeves, Buckaloo, Hanson, and Goodson in the secondary. Right now it's tough to be a defender for Fort Osage. You see the isolation plays, the counter plays. You see the ball swung to the outside. You see the option. Right now, everything's working for Kelly Donahoe's Blue Springs Wildcats. First and 10 now. It's a goal to go situation as Tuggle is going to be caved in on. Maybe a yard on the play. Lance Moore involved in the stop. He's one of their top tacklers. Lance Moore, a kid that set four records this season in tackles. Career tackles. He broke his own brother's record. Season solo and career solo. Good tackle by Lance Moore, the linebacker getting there, but the whole play was set up because of the guys up front. Jared Stevenson, number 55, finally took on our big fullback star, Joey Vaughn. Met him at the line of scrimmage rather than downfield, and that opened up the lane for the linebacker to go make the tackle. Second and goal now from the nine for Blue Springs. The ball is fumbled, the ball loose on the field. A lot of black jerseys there. Fort Osage football. Lance Moore down there as a linebacker fighting. The loose ball was laying in between the linemen's feet, but he is in there, dove on the football, and Fort Osage gets the big play. Sometimes you don't have to earn it with a big hit. Just take advantage of a bad snap. Here it is, quarterback and center. Just don't get it, the exchange. The ball falls right to the turf. The guard pulls, allowing the football away there. Look at the linebacker dive in there. Number 40, watch number 40 right here, diving and alertly getting to the football, wasting no time, and Fort Osage turns over the football and gives it back to their offense. Fourth fumble recovery by Lance Moore. Brayton to the outside. And a nice gain on first down as he'll go for three or four. Jeremy Braden stand playing with that hip pointer. I don't know, in your football playing days, did you ever have a hip pointer? But it's a bone bruise on the hip, and there's not much you can do about it. They're very painful. Yeah, I think that only happens to fast guys that get hit. <laughs> uh, I was not fast enough. So I, I don't know about the hip pointer. It sounds very painful uh, because it's such a big part of your running motion. And almost every time you get tackled, guess we're one of the spots that they're going to hit you. Someone's going to get you on the hip. Hopefully he'll be available the whole game. If not, they'll have to go to Chris Johnson, and they'd rather let their star running back get multiple carries. Second down. Let's call it seven yards to go. Inside give. Harris shaking and baking out near the 20-yard line. He has acquired a first down. Move the chains for the Indians of Fort Osage. Great call by Jerry Boyce. Remember, he says, this trap will work. If I can get through the first line, see the trap by the guard, and then a quick block by the lineman to the middle linebacker, and right up the middle is Bruce Harris. Here you see the blocking, just a trap blocking, the simplest play in football. If everyone's bunching up to the line, that's what you try to do is split them right at the center and get the fullback up the field. Jerry Boy stuck with it and finally was rewarded. On first and 10, the quarterback keeping on the option and going down for a very short game. Scorpio Horn, you remember Joe Horn? He used to play for the Chiefs. Well, this is his little brother, Scorpio, making the stop here. Well, Joe Horn is a fine player, and his brother makes the tackle, but the footing is going to be something that's a big factor tonight. When you're trying to get the ball to the outside, as long as you're running straight ahead, you're going to be okay. But if you've got to stop at all, it's going to be hard to make a cut. Mo that time, when he had to make the cut, had to completely stop. That's why it's so important for Fort Osage to establish the running game inside so that when they go to the outside, it's wide open. Without the inside running game, it's going to be very hard to attack the outside. Of course, Joe Horn is now playing for the New Orleans Saints and having a Pro Bowl season as Talamo with a play-action fake. 
Looking deep, and the pass is broken up. Incomplete, looking for Marco Sepulveda. Nice coverage there in the secondary by Blue Springs to knock that one away. Curtis Cooper with the coverage, number 15. Curtis Cooper does a nice job. This isn't a bad pass at all by Mo. The left-hander rolls out, and he has one-on-one -on -one out there, and he says, I'm just going to throw the ball up and let my big guy go up and get it. And it was really a nice opportunity, but the hand coming across by Curtis Cooper knocks the ball away. There's no interference. Good timing. Wait till he touches the football and grab the arms. Great defense there by Blue Springs. It's going to be now third down and eight for Talamo and Fort Osage trailing seven to nothing. 3.31 to play in your first quarter of play in first round state playoff action. Quick pitch, Jeremy Braden to the short side, cut off and taken out of bounds near the 25-yard line. As coming in, Jeff Troy to cut that playoff number 23. It'll be fourth down and punting time now for the Wildcats, or I should say the Indians. Here's the option. You've got to make the quarterback pitch quickly, and that lets everyone run to the football. And number 45, Bill Byer was the guy out there. He's the inside quick pitch. So far, the option's working okay, but you see great defense down the line by number 45. Bill Byer playing it perfectly, taking his pitch responsibility and 40, forcing Fort Osage to punt again. But actually, they moved the ball a little bit, and that's what they were looking for. Fourth down and seven. Jeremy Braden to punt it away here. Joey Moore deep back, punting away from him this time. Feels this one like a shortstop at the 48 and then gets just about decapitated at the 50-yard line as Eric Shepard came down and just rocked his world after the 30-yard punt, two-yard return. We'd like to thank the fine folks at Rental Service Corporation for their help with tonight's broadcast. Call them toll-free, 1-800-RENT-RSC for all your rental needs. Now, this is a great hustle play by Fort Osage on the punt return. There's been some success in the punt return game. But right here, you see the big load being brought by Fort Osage. Eric Shepard putting on a hit. Eric Shepard, the strongest guy on the team, benches over 300, squats nearly 500. As Whitworth faking the pitch, tucking, and he'll go for about five yards there. A smart play by the quarterback, Justin Whitworth, as he... And skewed the pitch there, Stan, and just took it up for a positive yardage. He handled himself very well, made a good decision there, gave the fake. When you're scrambling, one of the things to do is give a fake. You know, usually it's a fake downfield, and people will jump thinking you're going to pass, even if you're by the line of scrimmage. This time his fake was to a running back. He said, it looks like an option. Nope, there was no option. That was a pass play. Everything was covered downfield, but a nice run for five yards. Second down and five now from the 45 of Fort Osage. Stretch play. This is Jeff Troy. Good blocking in front of him. The first down as he takes it to the 37-yard line. And gain of seven yards will move the chains for Blue Springs. On a stretch play when this mud, it's going to be hard for the quarterback to get the ball out there to Jeff Troy. You can see on this play, they bunched up to the left side. It's a power formation, and he almost did not get the ball there. But when he did, he had blockers out in front. This time... You see blockers led again by the big fullback, Joey Vaughn, leading the way for running back Jeff Troy. Those guys are doing a nice job of getting the ball to the outside. They're in the same formation again. First and 10 from the 37 now. Delayed handoff. And running to the 32 and a quick five on the play. Good sequencing on that play by Kelly Donahoe. It showed that bunch formation to the left side. It's really a power formation to run around the left end. So the first play, they do run it around the left end. Now, if you're a Fort Osage defender and you see it again, you're thinking, uh-oh, power to the outside. But they run the counter play coming back, the perfect complement play, and take the ball right up the middle of the field. And that kind of play is very effective in this mud because the running back really doesn't have to cut. He basically gets a run straight up the middle. Jeff Troy is the lone setback. Fake it him on the roll. Pass caught by the fullback, Joey Vaughn, but for a minimal gain there. As coming up and making the stop, Nehemiah Hansen, number three from the secondary for Fort Osage. Well, now they fake the counter play, and with pressure on, the quarterback delivers the ball well, but the defense is right there. Nehemiah Hansen is there to tackle the fullback, Joey Vaughn, for a short gain. Gonna be third down and about three yards to go and really the first opportunity to, for Fort Osage to make a stop on third down. Out of the eye formation of Vaughn and Jeff Troy, two receivers to the near side. Toss sweep to Troy. Vaughn out there throwing another clearing block, and it's a first down run 
as he's up to the 23-yard line. A quick pickup of seven. Once again, Joey Vaughn leading the way. The fullback doing a great job blocking tonight, Stan. And if we get an opportunity to watch the crackback block, the wide receiver really did the great job. Josh Barge, number 22, see him at the top of your screen. He makes the key block, knocking number three inside. That allows his fullback to make the crossing block on the outside. A perfect one-two punch. Watch the crackback block right there, knocking number three off course, and then the big fullback knocks him out. Boy, open field blocking is not easy. He's making it look way too simple tonight. First and 10 now for the Wildcats, leading by a touchdown here. Late stages of the first quarter as they give it to the fullback, and Joey Vaughn rumbles for a nice gain as he nets about eight yards on first down. Well, when things start working one way, you can hit them with a lot of other things. And Kelly Donahoe right now has a very good rhythm. It's almost as if he scripted this drive. I know he, he didn't script this drive, but he's just going from one play to the next. And if you think he's going to hit outside, then he'll come back to the inside. If you think he's going to go to the left, he'll go to the right. He fakes the counter, throws the pass. Very good offense right now. The Wildcats really haven't been stopped. They've stopped themselves one time in this first quarter. They turned the ball over once, but they lead 7-0 as Andrew Tuggle with a touchdown pass from Justin Whitworth. Second quarter action on our Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week coming up next. Back here at Fort Osage on a chilly night, 7-0. Blue Springs leading Fort Osage after one quarter. Hey, the score of any athletic event is generally forgotten over time, but the actions of players, coaches, and spectators leave lasting impressions. The next time you attend a high school game, think of how history will remember you. Choose good sportsmanship and help rekindle the spirit of citizenship. Remember the lessons you teach today will help develop better citizens in your communities for tomorrow. This message brought to you by your friends at the Missouri State High School Activities Association and Metro Sports. Jerry Boyce, the veteran coach for Fort Sage in his 40th year of coaching, Coach Stan Weber. When That's he was right. offensive coordinator at Kansas State. When I was a starting quarterback, he was the offensive coordinator. And here you see Blue Springs domination, 106 yards already. But Fort Osage has the win right now. They need to try to stop Blue Springs at this situation. Second down and short, the play action, firing to the end zone. The pass broken up and nearly intercepted in the end zone as Derek Greaves nearly got the pick for Fort Osage. Boy, that was a real opportunity right there because throwing the football downfield, Justin Whitworth really threw this one up for grabs, and you do not want to do this in the end zone. That ball could have easily been caught by Derek Greaves. That would have been the big play that Fort Osage needed at this point in the ball game with the win. They're just thinking, if we can hold Blue Springs out of the end zone, this will be our quarter with the win to make a comeback. Third down and short now as Joey Vaughn, the fullback, goes in motion. Stretch it out to Troy, who's thrown for a loss. Jarrett Stevenson, the linebacker, came through and blew up the play for a loss. That is a big play, Jarrett Stevenson right there. Coming across the line on a stretch play, Jerry Boyce doesn't show much emotion, but inside he's going, yes, big play, guys. Here's a stretch play to the outside. But they're getting upfield, Jared Stevenson. And then he gets some help and hustle from Ryan Waters. It takes two guys sometimes to stop the forward motion. They, in combination, stop Blue Springs. It's fourth and about three or so. And with the wind in their face, they have to go for fourth down. So fourth down and four. They will go for it from the 16-yard line in Fort Osage territory, leading seven to nothing here. Quarterback looks like a broken play. Whitworth gonna throw, no one home, incomplete. Fort Osage football and down. Stan, that looked like a broken play from the moment the ball was snapped there. Now Kelly Donahoe wants to talk to his offense right now. You had a mix up on fourth down. A big break for Jerry Boyce and his Fort Osage team right there. Kelly Donahoe not happy. He knows he's dominated this first quarter and start of the second quarter, but a fumble and a missed opportunity there going into the win. Missing on third and then fourth down. You see the quarterback was just on a different page right here. He thought he had a counter run play and he didn't. So then he just throws the ball up for grabs. The receiver really not even out downfield. He's just blocking. It's a play that doesn't work at all. The execution wasn't there and Fort Osage takes over. They have it first and 10 from their own 16. Down by a touchdown. Give it to Braden. And maybe back to the line of scrimmage and that is it as mixing things up in the middle, Earl Jack there 
to clog things up. Number 75 always there along with Billy Byer, number 26. And Paul Defoe also in on the stop. And you can talk about establishing that running game and getting some movement and some yardage. But that's no easy task against Blue Springs front defensive wall. It's, it's nothing simple up there. And Coach Jerry Boyce has got to find something in his offense right now to get the ball off the goal line. That's their goal. Second down and 10 on the roll. The left-hander firing and incomplete as he overshot his receiver there. Steve Gearhart, the junior wide out. It's going to be third down and 10 now. When you're at the goal line, what Coach Jerry Boyce wants to do is have his quarterback on the move. He doesn't want him dropping back in the end zone. He's worried about someone busting loose from the backside and causing a sack. What's very interesting, though, is the fact that Fort Osage will put their quarterback on the roll to the right. Here's a left-hander. Usually you roll a left-hander out to the left, but so far tonight most of his passes have been rolls to the right. He's done a nice job of turning his shoulders and throwing the football that time, barely overthrowing an open receiver. Three receivers set as Braden goes in motion. And Mo in trouble, going to be sacked. Coming through and shooting through with the sack for Blue Springs was Josh Hawkins, the Rover man. And he's also Neil Smith, the former Chiefs stepson. Looking like Neil right there with the big time sack. Yeah, go to the quarterback, don't worry about anything else. That's kind of Neil Smith's philosophy. You know, that's how you get the sack that time, just beating the block of number 50 on the play, Todd Seamer. And he gets into the backfield and they're fortunate they didn't get a safety on the play, but they are back way up in their territory, punting once again. The 11th sack of the season for senior Josh Hawkins. And fourth and 20, punting time now for Fort Osage. Braden punting away. Joey Moore muffs it. The ball is loose on the field. And I believe the Wildcats have covered it up at the 39-yard line. It'll be Blue Springs football, 31-yard punt, no return, but boy, precarious move there by Joey Moore as he couldn't handle this one. Well, that's a little bit of the frozen hands. He thought he had the easy catch right here, went up, and no one's around. He's going to get a nice return on this thing, and boom, it just bounces off his hands, and then the good hustle knocks him off the football. Who is going to get it? Well, number 30, Josh Hawkins hustles up. He just had that football with the wind fly a little bit further than he thought it would. Everyone's trying to get to the football. There it is. Ah, number 30. Josh Hawkins gets it, retains the football for Blue Springs. First and 10 now for the Wildcats at the 39-yard line of Fort Osage. They lead 7 to nothing here. 9.23, clock running here in the second quarter. Toss sweep, the sophomore Andrew Tuggle trying to turn the corner. Leaping over tacklers and a good gain on first down as he is near the 32-yard line. He'll go for about seven yards in that first down carry. What they're doing is they're on the left hash mark. They put everyone on the right side, but they don't spread them out. They keep them real tight to focus the Fort Osage defense inside, and then you just outflank them to the outside. The pitch allows them to run, if they're fast enough, around the corner and beat everyone to the open side of the field. And so far, they've had great success doing that. And that's why Fort Osage is going to call timeout. What they're going to tell their guys is don't just play the formation, guys. Play the field as well. If there's a whole open side of the field over there, scoot out to the outside shoulder of those guys bunched up. That way they won't outflank us. Timeout on the field taken by Fort Osage, their first of the first half. 7-0, Blue Springs on top as they scored on a 43-yard touchdown pass from Justin Whitworth to Andrew You can be a part of the excitement. You got ticket information is available at the concession stand here at the stadium tonight. We're going to have Monday quarterfinal action here at next Friday, a week from tonight. And it's Friday, November 17th. We don't know the game as of yet, but we will have something. Missouri quarterfinal action. It'll be played on Monday, airs Friday, November 17th, as our Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week, 7 p.m. on airtime. Does that mean it counts as Monday night football or not? Yes, it will be Monday night football. Okay. Watch how the Fort Osage guys are all in your picture. That means they haven't even crossed the half line of the field. You watch the sweep, and it's easy to outflank them. Two-thirds of the field are to our left here. And look how much room. You can just keep running and running and running. Doesn't look like you got that much, but he got six yards. And the quarterback fumbles the snap from center and just dives on it. Back for a loss of three back to the 35-yard line here. Quarterback center exchange, one of the toughest things to do in cold, wet weather. And this time they got the football back. Justin Whitworth was able to pick the football up. Earlier he fumbled the ball 
inside the 10-yard line to turn it over. And, you know, right now, Fort Osage has got to say, we are happy to be in this ball game. They have not moved the football. They've had the ball moved up and down the field against them, yet they're only one touchdown behind. After the loss, third down and five now from the 35 in Fort Osage territory. Tuggle breaking free. Andrew Tuggle inside the 20. 10 touchdown, Blue Springs, Andrew Tuggle with his second touchdown of the night going 35 yards, this time a rushing touchdown. Good running by Andrew Tuggle. Looks like it was all stopped up at the line of scrimmage. Looked like Fort Osage was going to stop this play and create the fourth down situation. It was the play that they were looking for earlier. Jerry Boyce says we've got to tackle at the point of attack. We had the men there. Let's just tackle the running back up, but that didn't happen. Andrew Tuggle with his second touchdown run, patiently waited, took off upfield and made a nice third down run that ends in a touchdown. Eight touchdowns now on the season for the sophomore Andrew Tuggle. As Danny Watkins in to try the extra point here. Whitworth with the hole. And the kick is good. 14-0, Blue Springs on top. 8-11 to go in your second quarter. Both scored by Andrew Tuggle. Remember the fourth down play? I think they were trying to run the same counter. This time, it looked like he was stopped, but he just shed with his shoulders and then turned upfield in the block. At first, he didn't hit the hole exactly where he wanted to. But after stopping, he saw that he should cut back, found the opening, and then after breaking through the line of scrimmage, it was just a foot race. And we've seen so far tonight that foot races with Andrew Tuggle are not going to be good propositions for Fort Osage. This Wildcat running back has the speed to take it all the way into the end zone for the second time in the ball game. And he'll grab a jacket and try to stay warm on this very cold and wet and windy night here as you look at the scoring drive. Three plays, 39 yards, a minute 15 off the clock. Tuggle with his second touchdown of the night. See this? See all the jackets on right there? Now look over here. That's that's Kelly, Kelly Donahoe, yes, you know, the young guy. Daniel look Rockett. at the old Back guy, Jerry Boyce, about ready to retire. 10, He's like Bud Grant. Grant. There's no number jackets over here with his Jeremy players. Blake. They're all wearing just the normal jerseys. You say, it's cold, let's get ready. Now what he's looking for here is to take advantage of the wind, hopefully get a short kickoff and get something going with the offense. This is about the point in the game where if you don't have things happen positive, it can get away from you very quick. Two touchdowns down with high school kids is recoverable, but you get much more than that. The game moves so quick, it's very demoralizing for a team that usually can't come back. A little short kick, be fielded by an up player and covered up right at the 35 yard line is coming up and covering it up there. Ryan Waters for Fort Osage and they'll have it in very good field position. So Stan, Fort Osage needs to get something going here. Maybe uh, just a, they need a scoring drive. They need to move the football here. They got to get a little momentum, don't ah, they? It's just momentum. It's just moving the football. It's putting Blue Springs in bad field position. I don't think they've hardly been on their side of the 50 yard line the whole night. I mean, it's easy to run offense when you start at the 50 or better. First and 10 out of the eye formation. This is Jeremy Braden into the secondary. Jeremy Braden has 11 flat speed in the 100. They're not going to get him. 14 6. And there is a momentum shifter, folks. That's a little bit better than a first down. Jerry Boyce's offense is about fundamentals. It's not going to look real fancy. He's going to stick with the running game. He believes in good, sound football, isolation football. Just run your tailback right at the middle, the straightest point. The easiest distance between two points is straight ahead. And Jerry Boyce, again, showing no emotion, walks down the sideline. And I'll tell you, I know the man. Great satisfaction. That's how you come back. Fundamental football, busting a hole right up the middle. And Jeremy Braden shows the outstanding speed once they get, got him into the open field. 65 yards on the touchdown run as the extra point is good. As it's the 32nd touchdown run of the season, or touchdown of the season for Jeremy Braden. There you see, it's just a sprint. When you have that great of blocking up front and you run the isolation play, it just becomes a sprint. You tell your tailback, hit the hole hard, believe in the guys up front, they'll hit your blocks. And here you see, they just cross block this one. That's the key, they cross block at their guard and tackle, and it's a little different blocking. It's not a trap play, but it gives you a different, different look. And with this muddy field, you saw the defender's feet just slide 
slightly, opening up a little crease. The fullback really didn't need to make a block. He just went for the double team. And the reason why that happens, Kevin, is because Blue Springs is attacking the line of scrimmage so much. There's really just one layer of defenders. If you can crack through it, we've seen them try it with their fullback and not be successful. Now they do it with their tailback, and he's much more explosive. He takes it up for a touchdown, and now with just under eight minutes left in the quarter with a little momentum and the win. Fort Osage has a real chance to get back in this ball game. Now it's up to the defense. And if you see Jerry Boys come up and hit someone on the shoulders, that's like the greatest bit of love you could ever get, man. That's like a hug and a kiss. That's about as much emotion as you're going to get from him. And one of the truly nice guys in the coaching field. I could sit and talk to him for hours, but he had to go to parent-teacher conference meetings the other night when I sat down and talked to him. He can really talk with you and boy he's seen a lot of things in 40 years of coaching football as the kick away and it's going to be taken by Matt Webb at the 10-yard line Webb still on his feet Webb across the 40-yard line finally spun down at the 43-yard line after a 33-yard return by Matt Webb Matt Webb does a nice job of taking it right up the middle and saying hey we're going to bounce right back after that touchdown it looked like Fort Osage was in fairly good shape right here. A lot of guys around the football, but they're just bouncing off of him. You don't even see him. And whoop, there he comes right through the middle and taking it out. And another great field position play. Slipping and sliding a little bit, but you see the Fort Osage guys flying to the ground. He somehow keeps his feet in the middle of the mud. We talked about that's where the field is going to be muddy. Blue Springs is more moving toward the end that will be much less muddy, better footing if they can move the offense down the field a little bit further. First and 10, toss sweep, Jeff Troy. And tripped up, Justin Buckaloo came through and cut out his legs after a one yard gain. Justin Bugaloo getting into the backfield there. Nice job running the alley, getting to the outside. As the field gets muddier and muddier, what you want is for guys to run sideways. And it's hard to cut up field. You see him trying to make a cut, but slipping and sliding, there's no way to make that crisp cutback move. And Justin Buckalo was there to make the tackle. And it's hard to stop and cut. If the field was in perfect condition, he might have made that cut and gone for more yardage. Good defense on first down by Fort Osage. Second down and 10. Play action fake on the roll. Whitworth firing. Incomplete. Intended for his fullback, Joey Vaughn. Couldn't handle it. Third down and long now for the Wildcats. Just trying to get something easy down the line. Joey Vaughn, we've seen him do a good job blocking tonight. This time going out for a pass. But first of all, if you watch the fullback, he'll take up and he'll try to move outside. But because the defense got upfield so much, they drove him down the line where he ended up catching the football at the line of scrimmage. You want to get him outside about five or six yards, get separation, get ahead of the linebacker. But the defensive end did such a good job of getting upfield, it forced him down the line, and that blew up the play, basically. Third down and 10 now. Blue Springs at their own 45-yard line, leading by a touchdown. Inside give. This is Jeff Troy. And he grinds up near the 50-yard line as we'll get about six, but it'll be fourth down and about four yards to go in punting time now for the Wildcats. Now, right here, you see you're right up at the line of scrimmage. And he looks like there's a little gap there, but when it's third and long, they don't have the capability of going all the way for the first down. The pursuit finally gets there. And that was only the third play of the half run by Blue Springs in their own territory. They'd run 37 plays in Fort Osage's territory tonight. That's perfect field position for an offense. Josh Barge will punt on fourth down and a long four here. He averages 35 yards per punt. Deep back is Jeremy Braden. This is a very short punt and he just dies as it hits the 30-yard line, it'll be a 19-yard punt and no return. Our High V High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports. Want to thank the folks at Instant Images. Your business is our business. Instant Images. Stan, that touchdown really has kind of sparked this Fort Osage team. You saw a little more life there on the defensive side of the ball. As now with 6.06 left, they'll get it back on offense. Yeah, and you wouldn't be surprised if Jerry Boyce said, hey, they didn't stop the isolation play, the little play right there with our cross block. Why don't we try it one more time? This is Jeremy Braden lowering his head and shoulders and dragging 
Earl Jack for a gain of four on the play. It'll be second down and six yards to go as you look at new school records. Boy, a lot of school records by Fort Osage. Your team points, rushing. Jeremy Braden, you see in your picture there, he set three as far as touchdowns, individual points scored, and the rushing in a season by a single player of 1481. So a lot of records for Jerry Boyce's team in 2000. Second down at six now for the Indians. At their own 34-yard line, quick pitch. Jeremy Braden takes it to the 37. He'll go for three more. Sean Rogers takes him out of play, along with Jeff Troy. Here you see the option play, and when you have an option play, you rely on the fullback. See number 32 in your picture, Bruce Harris. He's got to make the key block. He bounces him out, but just not far enough. And Curtis Cooper not only made himself available for the tackle, he almost pulled the football out. Watch this. When you get blocked, don't give up. Don't give up. Get in on the tackle. And there was a fumble. It actually fell out of bounds. A break for Fort Osage. Third down and three now from the 37 in Fort Osage's zone. Out of the eye formation. Play action fake. Quick pass to the outside. Diving catch is not made, it's incomplete. Harris could not come up with it. It'll be fourth down and three now. Blue Springs on third down brought the blitz. He had the perfect play called, but again, they have their quarterback rolling out to his left, and with all the pressure, he can't get his shoulders turned enough to throw the ball accurately. If he could have got his shoulders turned, he would have thrown the ball out there, and it would have been a big gainer. See how he doesn't have time to do it? Normally what you want is that right shoulder to turn and turn your shoulder so you can put some steam on the football with the pressure in his face. He couldn't do it. A real missed opportunity. They had a receiver wide open. Ordo Sage still has not converted on a third down tonight as Braden punting it away. Joey Moore calls for the fair catch and takes it in on his seat of his pants at the 32-yard line, and Justin Whitworth will have it back there after the 32-yard punt. No return. You wonder sometimes you see Kelly Donahoe there talking to number five. He was number five, too, at KU, saying, why don't you just let me go in for this drive? You know, just let me throw a couple here, and we'll get out of this situation, get back on your, the side of the field we want to be and score. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I don't coach. I think I'd be grabbing the football from the players. <laughs> hey, let me throw a couple right here. I don't think I could ever grow up. Well, Kelly loves coaching. He started out after he got out of KU as an AT&T account executive. He said, I did that for a year, and I said, I missed football. I missed the kids. So he got back and got his teaching degree, and now he's coaching high school football. He's been a great town south as a head coach. Now Blue Springs is Andrew Tuggle down the sidelines. Cuts it back. Andrew Tuggle finally caught from behind. At the 38-yard line, he is he having a big night or what? The sophomore, Andrew Tuggle. We obviously have two explosive tailbacks. This time they fake the reverse and keep the football. Now, if you watch the ball move to the outside, they're going to fake the reverse right there. And then the Fort Osage defender comes sliding by. The guy that has outside contain actually just lost his feet on the play. And then you see a running back saying, I'm not going to step out of bounds. It's not going to be that easy. You're going to have to knock me out of bounds. A very good run. Too many times you see players just jog right out of bounds. But if you turn it back up, a lot of times the defense will take a little break, think the play's over, and you can gain another 10 or 15 yards. He does already have 99 yards in the ball game. And he got 30 on that play. First and 10 from the 38 of Fort Osage. Toss it out to Tuggle. Tuggle gets a great block from Vaughn again. Down the sidelines, Andrew Tuggle takes it near the six yard line. Yes, he'll go 32 yards on back to back plays. 30 and now 32. Andrew Tuggle over the century mark now, Stan. Well, you see the key block out here. Watch the fullback again, Joey Vaughn. Get on Daryl Harrison and just knock him out. Actually, it's Derek Greaves just getting knocked outside. It's his job to be outside responsible. So he's supposed to stay on the outside shoulder. But if you get driven out and to the ground, you open up a big, a big gap for the running back, and he takes it down the outside of the football field. He has good speed, but great blocking up front tonight by the fullback. First and goal from the six now for Blue Springs, leading by a touchdown. Toss sweep, Andrew Tuggle gets another block from Vaughn. Coast in the end zone, touchdown. The hat trick now for Andrew Tuggle, his third touchdown of the night, and the Wildcats now lead it 20 to seven. This guy is unbelievable. You don't have to touch the football to be a dominating football player, even if you're in the backfield, even if you're a running back. You get into a rhythm, and the coordination of blocking 
is so important. It's so hard, especially open field. And he's not picky who it is. It doesn't matter who's attacking the point of attack for Fort Osage. He's knocking them completely out of the play. Perfect head position and another touchdown run. Just get the ball to the outside and follow the big fullback, Joey Vaughn. Danny Watkins with the extra point, 21-7, Blue Springs, 3.26 to play before halftime. Watch Joey Vaughn on the play, leading on the sweep play, was sweep left. He's in motion, it gives him an advantage. Now he's looking for, do I block him in or out? I guess I'll block him out. Stretch him out and bury him right there. Josh Goodson says, I gotta go low, and the fullback does exactly what he should, just lays right down on him, takes him out of the play, and what they're getting is a one-on-one -on -one situation. Fort Osage has their outside contain guy there, but he's being blocked. He has no help from the underside. From the inside out, they've got to get the second player there. Sure, Vaughn can make the block, but someone else has got to get the running back who cuts up inside of the block. Hand it to the rest of the blocking unit for Blue Springs that you don't see the Fort Osage defenders there. We haven't focused in on it as much, but those guys are hitting their blocks well enough that that gap is there after the fullback makes the key block, the beautiful block that we have been focusing in on. And let me tell you, you know, Moose Johnston, the Dallas Cowboys, Richardson of the Kansas City Chiefs, before they started giving him the football, were such valuable players because they did the little things. And tonight, we're seeing it from a high school fullback. You don't see it very often in high school football. Three-play drive, and Blue Springs now back up by two touchdowns here just before halftime as Danny Watkins about to restart the game for Blue Springs. A Willie Mays catch taken in by Chris Johnson, and he'll roam it across the 30 near the 34-yard line. It'll be first and 10 now for Fort Osage here with 322 before the intermission. Chris Johnson, the backup tailback. How do you know about Willie Mays? You weren't even born when that happened. I've seen the video on ESPN Classic, Stan. I'm a huge ESPN Classic man. I just watch Metro Sports all day. <laughs> okay. Think you're going to get a raise out of that comment, <laughs> Stan? Yes, just tell the truth. <laughs> okay. First and 10 now for Fort Osage at their own 34-yard line. This is Jeremy Braden. A little bit of running room. Makes it up to the 37-yard line before he's shut down there. What I didn't tell you is I don't get ESPN Classic on my cable package yet, so I'm not tempted like you. There's some good stuff on there. Jeremy Braden, you know, you may not hit the big play every time, but you've got to continue to give him the football. There we are, <laughs> right there. Stan Weber. How do they, in that's, the that's house pretty tonight. impressive. How could they do that? <laughs> These windows are not that big. They found you. Track play on the inside to the fullback, Bruce Harris. Just grinding his way up to the 40-yard line before he stopped there. Now a quick timeout taken on the field by Blue Springs here as they think they can get the football back here, Stan, as it's going to set up now third and three for Fort Osage. Well, that shows you the confidence that Kelly Donahoe has in his ball club. You know, third and three, third and four, whatever it is, is very makeable. It's surprising to see the timeout in this situation. Still 237 left. Plenty of time here in the first quarter. First half, actually. Don't forget, we've got the Kansas 6A Finals coming up from Lawrence, either Shawnee Mission North or Olathe North. That's coming up on Metro Sports. We'll have that live Saturday afternoon from Memorial Stadium in Lawrence. They'll play the winner of Manhattan or Hutchinson in that ball game. So 11 o'clock live coverage on Metro Sports Saturday, November 18th. North versus North coming up this week. That should be an interesting battle, even though Olathe North won earlier this season 37-6 over Sam Brown's Indians. As Jerry Boyce off the field now as Shawnee Mission North, a red-hot team, no winning nine straight, and now thrown for a loss is Jeremy Braden. Earl Jack there to implode that play. Earl Jack on the jack of a tackle. Great penetration. Kelly Donahoe knew exactly what he was doing calling the earlier timeout. He thought he could get the big play. And it's just penetration up on the inside. No one hit Earl Jack. He came in on an inside stunt. He just took the inside step, and the blocker took an outside step. And when you have that happen, good fortune for the defense. It means you got a big, giant man 
unblocked. He did an outstanding job of form tackling the running back, just engulfing him in the backfield, forcing Fort Osage to punt once again. Kelly Donahoe says Earl Jack is the most respected player on our team. He treats everybody the same, and he is a big-time college prospect. That probably means he's the biggest guy on the team and the strongest. He is definitely that the, helps uh, the respect level. strongest guy on the team. And once again, his brother James is at Missouri Western, and he was an outstanding player. So the Jack brothers making a huge imprint on Blue Springs football as Jeremy Braden the punted away on fourth down and seven. 2.31 to go before halftime. Joey Moore awaits the punt here. Takes a Fort Osage hop. And will be touched down at the 25-yard line. Nice punt. You know, you didn't want to kick it too far to give the return and just let the ball roll with the wind a little bit. It worked out as well as it could for Fort Osage and puts Blue Springs in their worst starting position of the ball game at their own 25. And with the roll, 37 yards on the punt. Coming up, the Hy-Vee Halftime Report with Brad Porter. Scores and highlights from state playoff action from both sides of the line. And we'll have more from Fort Osage as well. It's our Hy-Vee Halftime Report. Coming up at 2.21 off the clock here, 21-7 in favor of the Blue Springs Wildcats over Fort Osage. Justin Whitworth and the Wildcat offense back out as Joey Moore in motion. A little swing pass to Jeff Troy with some running room. Blockers in front and nice pursuit there to shut down that play after a gain of about five for Jeff Troy. We saw that play to start the ball game. That got him a touchdown exactly to Tuggle. right. That's the first play of the ball game. That time they swung it to the right. In the beginning of the game, they swung it to the left side. The Fort Osage did a, did a nice job of this time stringing out the play, getting guys to the outside. And that's one of the things they talked about in that timeout. We need more than one guy to the outside. Blue Springs has not really hurt them up the middle. It's been on the corners, on the edges, with the speed and good blocking that scored the points for them tonight. Second down and seven, play action fake. Whitworth in trouble and gonna be sacked. Shooting through for the Indians to make the sack was Sean Goodson. Good play by Sean Goodson, putting pressure on the quarterback. And Ford Osage may think about taking a timeout and preserving the clock here. You see the rollout, the bootleg to the left side of the football field, trying to find someone downfield, all of a sudden breaking free and coming in and making the tackle. Sean Goodson does a nice job of throwing the quarterback down. It's going to be a loss of 11 yards. It's going to be now third down and 17 yards to go. Clock goes under a minute. Timeouts remaining two apiece. Whitworth. Setting up the screen, it's intercepted! Taking it, Ryan Waters who's tripped up inside the five yard line, near the two yard line, a huge play just before halftime by defensive end number 94, Ryan Waters. They're trying to run the jailbreak screen, but pressure in front of the quarterback, Whitworth, forced him to double pump the football. Now watch this. There were defenders in front of the face of the wide receiver. As he drops back, there's pressure by Mike Hyde, number 51, which forces him to throw the football. I think the ball was tipped and then caught by Ryan Waters. Ryan Waters gets the big interception. Watch, it's a jailbreak screen. You see number 22 is the receiver they're trying to get the ball to, but it was tapped with the left hand, number 51, Mike Hyde into the hands of Ryan Waters. And the interception gives Fort Osage perfect field position. First and goal officially from the four yard line. Dive play to the fullback. Bruce Harris pushing his way near the goal line. And it'll be second and goal now for Fort Osage as the clock continues to run. Keep They'll in mind, Fort Osage up. has two timeouts left, and they burn one right here. Yeah, good good use of the timeout. The coaches were yelling. It took the players a little while to get up and hand it on the play. You know, there was an interception play, but hand it to quarterback Justin Whitworth for hustling and making a tackle. A lot of quarterbacks just let the guys jog in for the easy touchdown. What you want to do is give your defense an opportunity to come out and play and make them earn the touchdown. He did it with good hustle. But what a great play. First of all, having coverage on the wide receiver. They're trying to get the ball to Josh Barge, but because he wasn't available, he pumped once before throwing the football and then the alert athletic play by Ryan Waters to see the tip and then catch the football on the ricochet. There's the man, Ryan Waters, playing on offense as well as defense in this formation. He's a tight end. 
35.6 seconds to go before halftime, and Jerry Boyce's team down by two touchdowns, trying to cash in here on second and goal. Quarterback keeper, Talamo, touchdown! Ford Osage, 31.4 seconds to go, and the quarterback keeps it. And it's now 21-13 with the extra point pending. With the timeout left, there was no problem running the play. If they didn't make it, they'd call a timeout and get another shot. There you see the quarterback. You see the pain in his face. I've been there before. You talk about talking to Jerry Boyce. It's not as much fun to talk to Coach Jerry Boyce after you've thrown an interception. <laughs> I happen to know that. And you can see what you feel like. Bruce Schumacher with the extra point. And it's good, 21-14 with 31.4 seconds to go before halftime. As Talamo with his third rushing touchdown of the season. But the big defensive play by Fort Osage set up the Talamo run. That's right, but the play before, the sack driving him back was a big play. Put him in deep field position and forced him to get out of the rhythm of their offense. You run that jailbreak screen when you need a big play. Third and long, it's one of the few plays that you say, if we hit it, it may go for, far enough to get a first down and it may go all the way. And because of it, they end up making a mistake, calling the timeout. This guy right here was the man who fought off of his block. We'll see this replay more tonight. Don't worry, number 51. Here you see it right here, getting up the field. Right hand up, then left hand up, batting the football. He was the guy that put the pressure up, got his hands up. You're taught as a defender, you can't get to the quarterback, get your hands up. He actually did it twice. Mike Hyde with his right hand the first time saying, if you're going to throw it now, I got you. He didn't. He pump faked. Then he brought it back. He brought the left hand up, knocked the football over to his fellow defender. And in an unbelievable first half where Blue Springs has really played great football, Fort Osage under Jerry Boyce has found a way to stay in the ball game. Down only a touchdown now. It looks like that'll be the score when they go into halftime. And that'll give him an opportunity to talk to the team at the half. Squib kick bouncing off a Blue Springs Wildcat. And the ball covered up near the 30-yard line by Blue Springs. But I tell you. Good Number 45, Billy Byer took one right in the chops there. He looked like a shortstop, except for fortunately he had a helmet because if he was a shortstop and the ball hit him like that, we'd have a baseball player laid out on the field. That was a shot right off the helmet. There he is, man. Bill Byer. Get your Santa, baseball I, I thought club, I had it, but, you know, this is a bad hop field. There's no doubt about that. It's like a slushy out there right now. Wet, cold, and frozen. First and 10 now from the 30 for the Wildcats. Running play. Going for five quick yards is Jeff Troy, tackled from behind by Sean Goodson. Jeff Troy brought down on the play by number 76, Noki Robertson. Also involved in the stop was Noki Robertson, one of the three Samoans that play for this squad here at Fort Osage as the clock gonna wind out. It's been a very entertaining and big play first half. Number four, Blue Springs, leading by a touchdown over Fort Osage, 21 to 14 here at Fort Osage Stadium. Stay tuned, the High V Halftime Report is coming up next. You're watching the High V High School Game of the Week on Metro Sports. Back here at Fort Osage for Missouri 5A sectional football. Blue Springs leading by a touchdown at halftime. Very entertaining first half, Stan. It really was. There's been a ton of big plays in the ball game. Blue Springs has really played from the front the whole ball game. Really have dominated in a lot of areas, but Fort Osage at home has found a way to fight these number four ranked Blue Springs Wildcats. It looks like we've got a nice second half set up. It is a very cold, chilly night, but the dance team still doing their number for the crowd here tonight. Stay tuned. More halftime is coming up next here on the High V Game of the Week. Back at halftime, 21-14. Blue Springs on top of Fort Osage. Time now for the High V first half highlights. Well, the first half started very well for Blue Springs. They opened the game by forcing a three and out right away. Got the football. And on the first play, on the first possession, they get a big block from Joey Vaughn on the little swing pass. And Andrew Tuggle sprints down the sidelines 
Blue Springs scores in their first play of the ball game. They lead seven to zero. Later, a running play on third and fairly long ended up with another touchdown run by the fast one, Andrew Tuggle. It was 14 to zero. Then on the first down of the next possession, the sprinter, Jeremy Braden, busts on a cross block up front. He takes it all the way for a touchdown. This game is back within seven points. Then you see the same combination. Get used to this. The fullback, Joey Vaughn, makes a key block right there. Tuggle takes it in for a touchdown. His third of the ball game and a 21st point in the first half for the Wildcats. But late in the first half, here you see the big interception. Number 51, Mike Hyde, tapping the ball to Ryan Waters. And that set up another touchdown, which pulled the game back within seven. Calamo with a quarterback sneak, 21-14. Blue Springs leading Fort Osage in this first round state playoff game. More halftime, you're watching Metro Sports. Back here at Fort Osage Stadium as we take a look at our high V first half stats. Stan? When you look at the Wildcats, you see they've dominated this game with the rushing yards, 177 yards. Tuggle has 137 of them with two rushing touchdowns, but the two turnovers. You look at the arrow, that's a big key. That's what allowed Fort Osage to rally and get two touchdowns themselves, to be within one. They haven't converted a third down. They're 0 for 6. The Indians have not completed a pass yet in the ballgame, even though they had a couple of great opportunities. Here in the second half, Kevin, the key is hit on a couple of those passes. They've had the open receivers. They need a couple of big plays in the passing game to make the comeback in this game. Blue Springs 21, Fort Osage 14, back with the second half kickoff from Fort Osage Stadium. You're watching the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week. Back here at Fort Osage, where you better get a hot cup of hot chocolate here. A chilly night, 21-14, Blue Springs on top of Fort Osage. Hey, folks, role models are important now more than ever in today's society. You can serve as a role model for others the next time you display good sportsmanship at a high school athletic event. Good sports are winners, and they're also vital to preserving our fine sports traditions. So the next time you attend a sporting event, Remember to be a good sport and help rekindle the spirit of citizenship. This message is brought to you by your friends at the Missouri State High School Activities Association and Metro Sports. Stan Weber, how about a hot burger to get you through the second half? Yeah, and they can even have me be the cook with that fire going. <laughs> I'll put my hands over that. But they did give me some hot chocolate. They're pretty nice of the people here at Fort Osage. The perfect drink for tonight. And those are some tough people out there. Hunting seasons, and you know, it's just that time of year. Those guys are all dressed up and ready to roll. What do you look for in the second half here, Stan? Well, Blue Springs is the team that has the best opportunity to blow this thing open. So Fort Osage needs to do some things right here early in the third quarter to keep this game close. You know, it really hasn't been that close, but sitting around at halftime only down by seven gives you the feeling that, yeah, you are close in the game, and you can be if you make something happen right away. I think that Fort Osage has got to find a way to complete a pass or two because otherwise you're going to see Blue Springs have nine guys right at the line of scrimmage. And when that happens, you're going to get just one or two opportunities to make a big play. We, we've seen it one big play tonight from the offense. Blue Springs won the opening toss. They've deferred their option in the second half. They'll get the football to start things here in the third quarter of play. And we'll see Kelly Donahoe's crew out there. Look at that. 28 of their 30 plays have been run on the opposite side of the field, the side they want to be in the in the Fort Osage territory. So that is a, a nice way to get some points on the board. If it's not for turnovers, they would be up in this game soundly. But right now, here we got an opportunity. This third quarter becomes very critical for Jerry Boyce. You see him there with the hat. He kind of took after Tom Landry when he's young, and Hank Scram used to dress up for ball games and wear hats like that every week. That was the old days. Now it's more casual, but the coach still has a hat on. Now the key for this third quarter is they've got the win, and Fort Osage, the Indians, need to catch up right now while they've got the win at their back. If they go into the fourth, fourth quarter down, it's going to be a tough job because field position obviously is going to be quite the advantage for the team that has the win at their back. Bruce Schumacher with a line drive kick that'll be fielded on a couple of hops. Matt Webb from the 12. Good blocking. Matt Webb across the 35 to the 37 before he's rocked off his feet by Chris Johnson. Nice special team stop. 
as Justin Whitworth and the Blue Springs offense out leading 21-14 for their first drive of the third quarter. Justin Whitworth is three for seven. He has that one interception on a tip pass, and basically the passing plays that he's thrown has been really short, safe passes, and that's pretty smart in this weather. When you do that, you usually can avoid turnovers. It's just one of those deals where a defensive lineman tips the ball and it ends up being an interception. So they're doing a nice job of running the football, basically, and throwing in a few passes here and there. Tuggle and Vaughn in the backfield. Now Vaughn goes in motion. Toss sweep to Tuggle around the far side. Breaks some tackles and gets up to the 39-yard line. He'll get about two on the play before he's shut down. How about the first penalty flag of the ball game? John Schindler is your referee tonight. Actually, there was one penalty for two yards by Porto Sage. Clipping game. offense. That's a big penalty, and that happens when you got a crack back block, when a wide receiver is coming from the outside end. We've talked about that block being a key block. And what Fordo Sage does, here you see number 22 come in, and the defender right there, the block in the back. Number 22, Josh Barge, blocked in the back, but mainly because the defender stepped up and attacked the line of scrimmage. If you wait, you get cracked back. They, that was a great adjustment at halftime to have their defender get upfield real quick and take the crack back block out of play. It's a spot penalty. Wow, that is 15 yard penalty. It's going to be first and 26 now. Stan. That's a great adjustment. When you're getting cracked back, what you want to do is get up in the area where you force them to block you in the back or leave you unblocked. And that's what happened on that play, which caused a big 15 yard penalty. So from the 20, first and 26 stretch play to Andrew Tuggle, turning the corner, and then gets collapsed upon by Chris Johnson, linebacker for Fort Osage. There's some hustle, some guys getting over and trying to make the tackle. Chris Johnson, the second string running back as well, gets the outside. Now, there was a good block on the left side. You see the corner turn. The fullback makes a nice block again, like usual. But this time, there's a little bit of help. And with first and very long, you can allow them to gain a few yards. What you want to do is when you get the defender there, make the sure tackle. No missed tackles right now. And Blue Springs will have a hard time picking up a first down. Gain of six, second down and 20 for Andrew Tuggle and the Wildcats. They have it at their own 26-yard line. This is Tuggle again into the secondary. Andrew Tuggle across the midfield stripe. Down to the 33-yard line of Fort Osage and a big-time pickup by Andrew Tuggle. Well, they run the counter play, but in this mud field, what they basically have is their running back run straight up the middle. You see the big guys, number 71 and 79, Robert Taylor and Brandon Case, just opening up a big hole right up the middle. It's the old counter tray play. You'll see the left side of the line pulling from left to right, opening up a big gap. Other linemen getting in position. The umpire helping out on the block a little bit. And they have the big run on second and long. 41 yards in the play, and Tuggle gets it again. And Tuggle into the secondary again. Touchdown, Andrew Tuggle for Blue Springs. Same play. Play works one time. Kelly Donahoe says, let's bring it again. The left side of the offensive line does a great job. You'll get a chance to see it. Robert Taylor and Brandon Case, the two big guys, pull from left to right. And what helps you with that play is you get a lot of movement up front with your lineman, but the running back basically gets the run straight up the field. Footing does not become a problem. There's no safer play for the offense to run than hand the ball on that counter tray. Give all this motion, but tell your running back, hey, hit it right up the middle, right where the center lined up, take off. See if you can get a score. And flags on the play before Danny Watkins can try the extra point. Andrew Tuggle now with four touchdowns on the night. Three receiving, or I should say three rushing, one receiving. And what a huge night. Ten touchdowns in the season now for the sophomore Andrew Tuggle as he took that one 33 yards. And it's now 27-14, Blue Springs. He's lit him up for 217 yards and only 14 carries. Now, he's run the football very well, but a lot of times it's been big holes open up by the blocking unit. And this kick is blocked. No good as shooting through there, number 20, Derek Greaves to block that one. 
Good hustle by Derek Reeves, laying out and blocking the extra point. Well, it remains 27-14, Blue Springs, 10.04 to play here in your third quarter. Good hustle play, not giving up there, but Jerry Boyce cannot feel very good. He had the wind at his back. He had a 15-yard penalty that put him in a first and 25 situation. Had a decent first down play, but then on second down, they run the counter tray right up the middle, bust it for a first down, come back with the same exact play for a touchdown. So you get a chance to watch this touchdown play and you see the blocking up front. He basically just waits. Nice move with his feet there, though. The defender had a dive at his feet, and it's a very subtle move, and that's the little things that you see the running back do. Andrew Tuggle, the first time, I didn't even see him have that little stop and go, but he's kept his feet underneath him very well. Right there, you see him pull out in the big holes of blocking downfield. This team's doing a great job of hitting their blocks. The offensive linemen do an outstanding job, and it just you can't say enough about the fact that if you can run your running back straight from the point that he lines up toward the end zone, the chances of him slipping and falling in this kind of weather just go out the window. You're going to gain some yardage if you can get some blocks up front, and they're burying the people in the middle of the line. Blue Springs averages 190 yards rushing per game as this is a squib kick through the hands of Johnson, picked up by Buckaloo, breaking tackles, and takes it across the... 35 to near the 38-yard line. Nice run there by Justin Buckaloo, and it'll be first and 10 now for Fort Osage in their own territory, down now by a margin of 13, 27 to 14. All game long, Jerry Boyce has looked out on the field and basically looked at something like a 14-point deficit, but his team's refused to give up, and it's exactly the mentality that they'll have coming out right here, their first offensive series of the second half wasn't exactly what they wanted, but if they can get down here, somehow find a way to score and pull back within one with that block check at the point, they really have a chance to make Blue Springs pay for that miss. In motion, Gearhart, stretch play, Jeremy Braden with Ronnie Room. Jeremy Braden into the secondary, down the sidelines, caught from behind, but a big play for Ford Osage to start the third quarter. That was a nice run, getting the fast running back out to the outside. Jeremy Braden does a nice job of turning the corner. Here you see the play. It's really a play where they're trying to bounce it to the outside. They get some good blocks at the point of attack, and then it's a foot race, and he does a nice job. He's barely run out of bounds. But you see the lineman pulling right in front of him. Number 50 opens the hole up. Nick Finkel outside pulling. Not the biggest offensive lineman, but good movement out there and a key block on the corner. 27 yards and a first down now into Blue Springs territory. Dive play, the fullback breaking free. Bruce Harris, a first down run as he goes for a quick 13. Well, they've been trying to get that trap play to work all night long, and it's a nice compliment. You go to the outside and make Blue Springs wonder. This is the first time you get out the outside, so you run the quick trap up the middle with the fullback, Bruce Harris. You see Bruce Harris right there, gets right past the linebackers into the defensive backfield. Blue Springs. Jeff Troy's had to make a couple of touchdown saving tackles. One on the sideline with the running back, Jeremy Braden, and this time on the fullback right up the middle. First and 10 from the 22 yard line. Buckaloo in motion. Give it to Jeremy Braden. Following his blockers, tackle from behind by Josh Hawkins. He'll get two on the play, second down and eight. He strung out that play really well. Didn't allow him to turn the corner. And he has a chance to shift into the extra gear. He can make a play, but that time, Braden really didn't get an opportunity. He made a nice run on the play, but what you're going to find here is the defender gets after his ankles, just hustling upfield, slipping and sliding, but right there, just getting a little bit of piece of the ankle right there, slowed him up, and real subtle little play right there, but that maybe was a difference between a short gain and an eight or 10 yard run. Second down and eight from the 20 now. Play action fake. Calamo fire in the middle, the fullback wide open. Bruce Harris, touchdown, Fort Osage. At halftime, we talked about the fact that they had open receivers, and this was the biggest play when they had the fullback slip right down the middle. The nice thing about this play is it looks like all their running plays. How often is that fullback going right up the middle and either blocked or ran the football? So no one takes notice when he comes rushing up the middle. No one sees anything unusual, and that allows him to go right down the middle of the field. They have all their other receivers running 
to the flag, pulling the defenders outward and allowing the middle to be wide open for Bruce Harris. And the first completion of the ball game is a touchdown for Fort Osage. Schumacher with the extra point. It's good. And it's now 27-21, Blue Springs. 8.35 to play in the third quarter. As you see the third receiving touchdown of the season for the fullback, Bruce Harris. Watch the fullback, number 32, slip right out over the left side of your screen. He slips out the middle of the field. No one sees him. The linebackers are coming up. They're thinking about a run. This ball is perfect, de perfectly delivered by Mo. There's no one in sight. Bruce Harris makes the catch and takes it in. They had that opportunity earlier in the game, but they went against the win. This time he throws the ball on the line. Nice pass. Boom, right there. Easy touchdown. Great design on the play. This time it's executed and an answer drive pulls them back within six, which is basically the closest they've been since the first play Blue Springs ran as an offensive unit in this ball game. Nice drive on the play, and probably more than anything, not only did they have the big play, they had four plays for 62 yards. They actually so showed some diversity in the offense. Getting the running back, Jeremy Braden on the outside a little bit, getting the trap, and then finally the pass play. So, so far, in the first half, we've just seen Fort Osage hit one big play. You feel much better if you have an offense that's working, because that's what puts the defense in a little bit of a position of being off balance. Now. Can the defense stop Blue Springs? Other than the turnovers by Blue Springs, they really haven't done it all night long. Can they stop Andrew Tuggle? Who's had the huge 214 night. yards and over half of the third quarter left. Squib kick stays in play. Fielded near the sidelines and rushed up by Matt Webb across the 20 near the 22 yard line. And there comes Andrew Tuggle. He's had a huge night tonight. Four touchdowns, over 200 yards rushing. Stan, he came into this game with 587. This pace, he may get 500 tonight. <laughs> you know, some guys feel more comfortable in the mud than any place else. The, you know, guys like me with big feet and kind of slow, I kind of like the mud because the fast guys slow down and I catch <laughs> the same speed. So I actually look faster. Now, I'm not saying he's slow or has big feet. I don't know, but he sure looks good running in the mud. First and 10 from the 22 now for Blue Springs. Stretch play to Tuggle trying to cut back and going to be taken down. Lance Moore and Mike Hyde collaborate on the stop. He'll get two on the play, at least second down and eight. But that play was made by Ryan Waters, number 94. He's the guy that got upfield, fought through his block, got to the outside on a stretch play. Where's the stretch play designed to go? On the outside, we've seen it all night long, but finally, Ryan Waters fights through the block and says, no way, the pursuit's out in front. You've got to turn back and run into the other guys. And sure enough, he turned it back right into Lance Moore to make the tackle. It all starts with a, someone getting off a block and turning the running back back inside for the play to finally be blown up. Second down and seven now for Blue Springs. And now a fumbled exchange. Wentworth trying to get it back. And the Wildcats will maintain possession. It's the second or third time we've seen that happen tonight, Stan. It's it's just a sloppy night there on the field. As cringing on the sidelines is Kelly Donahoe. It's the third time they fumbled a snap. Now they lost one right when they're at the goal line. If you weren't with us earlier in the ball game, but they had the two others get back. And we've talked about this part of the field in the second half is going to be the hardest area for anyone to do anything. See him trying to get his hands warm and dry a little bit. But from the 20-yard line to the 50 on this side of the field is where all the action has been tonight. Third down and eight now for the Wildcats. Quick pass, and it's wide of the mark, incomplete. The intended receiver, Josh Barge, nowhere near that aerial. It'll be fourth down and punting time. Well, now we know why Justin Whitworth was wiping his hands off so feverishly. He heard the pass play, and sometimes after your hands are cold and you just fumbled, you've been diving down the mud, the last thing you hope your coach does is say, oh, it's time to pass. You know, oh, great, coach, how am I going to get my hands clean? He's digging in there. Now he made his heating unit right there, a mud pile in there, so he can't ever clean his hands off. But that was a curveball. He threw to the outside. He didn't grip the ball very well. And with the wind blowing, that blew the ball way away from the receiver. Fort Osage's defense finally comes through and forces a punt. Josh Barge will punt it away. Deep back is Jeremy Braden. 
This one against the wind and very short. He touched down at the 48 yard line at first and 10 for Fort Osage after the short punt by Josh Bard. Barge, I should say. Great field position. You know, other than that turnover where they got the interception and started inside the 10, this is the first time they've been able to start in plus territory. What a difference. What an opportunity. Fort Osage's offense comes out on the field and has an opportunity, if they can score a touchdown and kick an extra point, to go in front. And that hasn't been the case for almost this whole ball game. Braden and Harris set up in an eye formation. First and 10 from the 48 as... Gearhart in motion. Jeremy Braden goes for a quick five on the play down near the 43-yard line. So Stan, they're starting to free up number 21 tonight a little bit. Yeah, a little different look. Before, it basically had ran off the right side of the football field. Look at the mud on the helmet. Here you see them go off the left side with the isolation play. A little cross block up there and a dive forward and poof, see his head deep into the mud. You see the movement, and then a little defensive uh, frustration saying, I'm gonna drive you in the mud after you drove me five yards off the ball. Good block by Fort Osage. Second and four, trap play to the fullback, and Harris dragging tacklers as the first down for Fort Osage. This part of the field right here, you're gonna see this play. You know, give it to the tailback, but then don't ever forget the trap play. This is going to be a core part of the offense, and what they've done now is landed right in a mud hole. This is the muddiest part of the field, and it's going to be very hard. There's hardly any grass around there. It's going to be hard for the center and the quarterback to get things done. This is an important play. If you're a quarterback right now, what you're thinking is don't hurry out from underneath the center. Secure the football. First and ten, play action fake by Mo, Gunning over the middle, and it's caught! Marco C. Pavoda pulls it in, first and goal now for the Indians. Tyler Mo not on the roll to his left, just dropping back in the pocket and firing the football like it's a sunny day in Florida. That's just a passing offense, only the second completion of the game, but energized by the touchdown, he just drops back, gets out of the mud a little bit and fires the football on a post pattern. That's good coverage right there by Blue Springs. Marcos C. Pavolida with a big play. Nice catch, but a perfect throw at the belt level. Only his fifth catch of the season. Jeremy Braden off the right side, fighting hard, dives, touchdown, Fort Osage. Braden would not be denied. Jeremy Braden over the right side, just working his way, breaking some tackles and seeing the goal line, dives over, and here they have an opportunity to take the lead if they can make this extra point. Eight yard touchdown run by Jeremy Braden, playing with a hip pointer. It didn't look like it there, Stan, as he was just driving through tacklers as he took it in for six. The good thing now is he, his, his side is so frozen he doesn't feel that hip pointer. The extra point is good. And Fort Osage has battled back. They take a 28-27 lead, 5-10 to play here in your third quarter. Second touchdown of the night for the junior, Jeremy Braden. 32nd of the season. He knows how to score. Here you go. Just give the ball to your big guy over the right side. He slips one tackle, then a second tackle, then the third, and places the football over the orange line for a touchdown. There he is, breaking the tackle right there. That's the first one. Then the linebacker slipping in the mud leads him to the next guy, and then he dives over. Second touchdown of the ball game. Jeremy Braden, after the extra point, has put the home team, the underdogs, Fort Osage, up 28 to 27. Even though Blue Springs came out and scored to start the second half, Fort Osage has answered, taking advantage of the win corner, and they're still 5-10 as the frozen group of fans are suddenly warmed in their heart as they get up and cheer for Jerry Boyce. They do not want this to be his last football game before retirement. Kelly Donahoe's just shaking his head. He said, we had a good game plan. We've been executing just fine. We've made just a couple of mistakes, and look at the scoreboard. We're behind by one. Squib kick. And it'll be covered up near the 35-yard line. First and 10 now for Blue Springs. As 
And look at Jerry Boyce on the sidelines in his 40th year of coaching. And Stan, I asked him, I said, what's more exciting, the college game or the high school? He says, I find it more exciting to be on the high school football field with these kids than calling plays against a Nebraska or Oklahoma in the Big Eight in his days at Kansas State. So he's very excited to be here. Still has a lot of enthusiasm for the game, but he wants to call it quits on his own terms. First and 10 now from the 35-yard line for Blue Springs and Justin Whitworth. Toss sweep to Andrew Tuggle. Trying to turn the corner, and he'll lose a yard. Shooting in Justin Buckaloo. Bugaloo made the tackle. We've been fine, waiting for someone to get into pursue. But look at Jared Stevenson, number 55 on this play. Play it perfectly. They bunch up to the left, try to stretch things out to the open side of the field. But look at number 55 right on the left side of your screen. See how he's battling the blocker? He is battling the blocker right here, doing a great job against Joey Moore, keeping everything to the inside and not allowing himself to be pushed too far out. Not only do you want to turn the play in, do not allow yourself to get pushed out too far. That will allow the pursuit to get there and make the tackle. Loss of one, second and 11, given on a delay. Tuggle, Andrew Tuggle, across the 45, has a first down to the 47-yard line as Tuggle goes for 13. Now we got a great game going right now. You see the running play. This time they're not trying to stretch it out. They go back to that counter play. If you want to put your defenders out to the outside, they say, okay, we'll hit you back up the middle. Remember the long runs? Boom, right there's the block by the offensive lineman. He cuts it out to the after outside after he's got past the line of scrimmage. But the thing that's been impressive all night long with Blue Springs offense and Andrew Tuggles, they've been able to run the ball outside and inside throughout the whole ball game. First and 10 from the 48 yard line, Joey Moore in motion, and they give it to the receiver around, and it's shut down for a two yard play. Ryan Waters from his defensive end slots had an interception and doing a good job of stopping that little gadget play. Ryan Waters is an athletic player and he's doing an outstanding job. There they run the spinner series. Joey Moore is in motion, and what they do is give him the football right at the snap and fake the ball someplace else. But the main thing they do is try to get their blocker out in front. Joey Vaughn, if you want to just isolate on number 40, if we had 25 cameras like ABC does on Monday night, we would just isolate on this guy. He'll take us to the football almost every play. Second down and nine now. Near the midfield stripe for Blue Springs, trailing by one. Toss it out, Tuggle slips and falls and pays as Derek Greaves with a decapitating hit at the 48-yard line. That was a nice hit on the play. Here you see the play, number 40 leads you to the ball, you know that, turns upfield, and then here comes a big hit. A little slip helps him get in position. Listen to that hit. That feels good if you're up here. <laughs> Third down and six yards to go now for the Wildcats. Delay. Tuggle. First down. Inside the 40 to the 38, but flags come in late. On the run for the Wildcats, number 24. Well, that's a big flag right there. Because they had a nice play. Ford Osage did a good job of defending the play. They really attacked the offensive linemen who were pulling in the counter tray. But that doesn't mean the play's over. If you got a good running back like Andrew Tuggle, he says, that's okay, I'll just bounce it outside. Great eyesight after running the ball up the middle, all these plays, he saw that it wasn't open in the middle. And he bounced it to the outside. But one of the guys outside held on the play. Here you're gonna see number 75, Earl Jack, get outside, and he just grabs hold of number 57 on the play, Sean Goodson. See, Sean Goodson attacked him to the inside. He's been used to bouncing him out. This time, Goodson got in on his inside, so what he did is he tried to log him in, but he got too much arm, held him on the play, and that caused Blue Springs to be called for the penalty. So now on third down and 16 yards to go after the penalty, Whitworth on the roll, firing, 
And a diving attempt is no good by Josh Barge. It'll be fourth down and 16 yards to go. And punting time now for Blue Springs, trailing by one with 153 to go in your third quarter. One of the few times Blue Springs has gone downfield. This is a comeback route. You see on the top of your screen, number 22, he acts like he's going deep, puts up his hand to fake out the defender, and then comes back to the football. And as you see, the ball slid on the ground. The official's right there to make the call. Incomplete pass. And for the second possession in a row, Blue Springs is forced to punt into this wind. Kelly Donahoe right now is just telling his team, we're okay. We get the wind in the fourth quarter. We can outscore them like they outscored us in the third quarter. Jar, uh, barge plenty to weigh. Short punt, once again, like Stan said, going against that 15 mile an hour north wind, and it dies at the 32 yard line. And Fort Osage will get it back 25 yards on the punt, no return, and Talamo back out as Coach Boyce. Coach Boyce has made a few nice adjustments. Now, I really, really like has. the fact that he, he didn't roll his quarterback to the left the last couple of passes. He allowed his quarterback to drop back in the pocket, step forward, and be able to fire the football and he has thrown the ball a lot more accurately when he was set in the pocket than he did rolling out. Jeremy Braden with two touchdown runs tonight. First and 10 from the 32 and Fort O's own. This will be Braden. Not much there as Paul Defoe and Bill Byer, a couple of linebackers, collaborate on the stop. And Curtis Cooper busting down on a play, getting an extra defender in there. We're talking about how Blue Springs attacks the line of scrimmage, and that time from his end position, actually from the defensive back position, Curtis Cooper gets up in there and helps on a tackle. Now, in the goal line play, he also was there, but he slipped off of the tackle, which allowed the eight-yard touchdown run. This time, he squeezed the play, and they tackled him for a short gain. Second down and nine now. Two receivers to the far side. And this is Braden. And he runs into a Wildcat as he gets to the 34-yard line. It's going to be third down and long here for Jerry Boyce's club. Okay, third and long here. Now, not in as much rhythm. With the win at his back with 46 seconds, does he play conservatively and say, don't turn over the football. Even if we have to punt, we're going to get a punt with the win if they hustle, or do you try to use the win one last time to throw the passing game? They've had some success in the passing game. Here they are, they have not converted on six tries on third down yet in this game. This is third down and eight as Buckaloo in motion. Rolling near side and firing and in and out of the hands of the tight end, Ryan Waters, he couldn't reel it in. It'll be fourth down and eight now. Well, there he is rolling to his left again. Where was the ball thrown? Slightly behind. And that's what happens. It's hard, especially when you're not warmed up. I mean, you're not going to be warm in this kind of weather. It's too cold out here to get your hips and your shoulders turned and throw the football. Now, with it being an incomplete pass, they catch a break. They don't have to use a timeout to get their punt team out. They'd much rather, they'd much rather catch the ball, obviously, but at least they get a chance to punt with the win. Get one last use of the win before they turn it over to Blue Springs in the fourth quarter. 19.4 seconds ago as Jeremy Braden to punt it away. Punting away from Joey Moore. Makes a Indians roll inside the 25, touchdown at the 24-yard line. 43 yards on the punt by Jeremy Braden, eight yards over his average. So Blue Springs will have it late stages of the third quarter, down by one, 28-27 at their own 24. Very effective punting here in the late first half and then here in the third quarter. He not only got the ball downfield, he punted it to the sideline where there was no return and it forces Blue Spring to start back up and Jerry Boyce could not be happier than what happened in the third quarter. He had the win, he got the comeback he needed with the block extra point. He actually has a lead going into the fourth quarter and that's about as much as he could ask being down by seven to this Blue Springs team at halftime. First and 10 out of the I formation. Running play to Tuggle and he's blown up and the guy that got in there with the penetration, the Samoan. Noki Robertson, also Lance Moore involved as well. And the clock has wound out here in the third quarter, but Fort Osage has rallied back. They lead by one, 28-27, back with the fourth quarter here on the High V High School Game of the Week on Metro Sports. 
Kevin White and Stan Weber back here at Fort Osage Stadium. 28-27 as we go to the fourth quarter. Tonight's game is not only a competitive contest between the two schools, but it's also an educational experience for the students involved because high school activities are about learning life's values. This message from your friends at the Missouri State High School Activities Association and Metro Sports. I think what these guys learned is that when they grow up and they're responsible for the house and there's leaves outside, no matter ho how cold it is in the fall, you got to go out and suck it up in this kind of weather and get the leaves picked up. That's what my wife tells me at least. First and 10, or make it second down and 10, and Andrew Tuggle cutting to the outside and taken down at the 28-yard line. Nice stop by Chris Johnson, the linebacker, number 35 for the Fort Osage Indians. Kind of an important early fourth quarter play here. I mean, the third and medium range, Blue Springs has had all kinds of yards in the ball game, but they haven't been quite as consistent in the last couple of possessions. And Fort Osage would like to stop them right here because with the win, they know they're gonna have to fight that all night long. This field position the rest of the ball game is really gonna be in the favor of Blue Springs. Third down and five now. From the 28, the Wildcats on. Play action fake, quarterback under pressure. Gonna be sacked, Lance Moore. And a loss of eight. The linebacker gets a big time sack. Fourth down and punting time now for Fort Osage. Fort Osage brought the house. They brought their linebacker up in a tough position. Look at number four, he's right at the line of scrimmage. He fights off the block and gets upfield. Has enough speed to run down the quarterback before he can get rid of the football. They blitzed everybody. They let it be known right from the start of, before the snap, their pre-snap look was seven across the board. No linebackers off the ball. They were in position to blitz. They sold out and it paid off with the sack. Josh Barge to punt inside his own 10 yard line. He has the win with this one. Jeremy Braden gonna let it hit. He'll field on one hop from the 41. Makes a man miss. And then dives ahead to the 48. A seven yard return after the 34 yard punt. I'd like to thank the fine folks at Reynolds Service Corporation for their help with tonight's game. You can call them toll free 1-800-RENT-RSC for all your rental needs. So good field position now for the Indians as they'll have it at their own 48-yard line, leading by one, 28-27, 10-25 to play in your ball game. And it got a nice bounce there. Instead of the ball just kind of muddling down in the wet turf, it hit in one of those areas where the grass was still there, and it bounced right up to the return. Braden is set up as a wing here as they go to the fullback, and... Good hard running by Bruce Harris to the 48. He'll get a quick four on first down. And four yards is okay. Jerry Boyce is thinking right now, just control the football. We see some limping out there. See number 75, Earl Jack. We'll take a look at him in a minute. But just try to slip something up the middle. The most basic play that they've run all night long, the one they keep going back to, is the trap play up the middle. And this time he made himself small, kept low to the ground. Bruce Harris is only 5'10". He lowered his shoulders down and slipped through and made the best of the of the run as he could. Second down and five, Mo on the roll, firing, and the pass is incomplete. Diving attempt made there by Steve Gearhart, but he couldn't bring it in. It'll be now third down and five. Look at Mo rolling to his left. He didn't throw the ball behind him at all. This ball is accurately thrown. Great defense, fitting the ball in there, and almost a catch by Steve Gearhart. Man, that was a Tough throw and a tough catch. Could have been a big play in there, but with the drop, it's third and about five. Buckaloo and Sepulveda to the near side. A wing to the near side is Jeremy Braden here. Now he goes in motion. They give it to Braden off the right side, and he's taken down shy of the first down. Good defense again getting up is Curtis Cooper on the play. Now, what happened that time is Blue Springs saw the trips formation out to the closest side to us right here, and they only put three guys out there. They were really staying strong on that side of the field, and Curtis Cooper really avoided two linemen who moved out and blocked and stepped inside and made a tackle. That's a nice play right there by Curtis Cooper, a guy off the corner we've seen get involved in stopping the running game. Fourth down and four, Braden to punt it away. Joey Moore waiting back at his own 20-yard line for Blue Springs. Joey Moore from the 21.
gets cascaded on by Ryan Waters. What a hit. Flags on the play. Ryan Waters putting on the big shot. And Ryan Waters doing it all, playing defense, offense, and special teams. Pop, all you saw right there was a head jerked back. Oh, man. I'm glad the NFL guys didn't see that because he'd been fine. That was a head-to-head -head contact right there. I mean, it's an accident. He wasn't shooting for the head at all, but boy, nice hit by Ryan Waters, a guy who made a big interception. Locked below in the, the waist half. against the return team after the catch. 10 yard, 15 yards from the spot. He'll ac actually be half the distance because the spot of the catch and the punt was at the 21 yard line or so. So this really backs up Blue Springs. By far their worst field position of the ball game. Yeah, they've got the wind right now, but they're down by one point and they're all the way back to the 10 yard line. And a couple of big penalties. We've seen 35 yards in penalties for Blue Springs. Not that many in number, but the big kind of blocks in the back. And all 35 of those have been in the second half while their offense has sputtered some. They've only scored six points in the second half. And one of the reasons why is some inopportune timing of some big 15-yard type penalties. First and 10 now from the 11-yard line. Toss sweep to Tuggle. Cutting it back, taking it toward the middle of the field. And he'll go for... Gain of four yards on the play up near the 15-yard line. Andrew Tuggle does a nice job on this play, but watch number 94 in the defense, our guy Ryan Waters. You see him come into the picture right here. He does a great job of fighting right there. Says, you're not going outside. Uh-uh, turn back in, run into the pursuit. A nice run by Tuggle. He does a nice job of gaining some yardage, but a great play by Waters. The difference here in the second half with Waters getting upfield and not is like night and day. Tuggle has... 243 yards in the ball game. Second down and six from the 15 now. The delay to Tuggle. Nice defense by Ford Osage. Adam Ross in there to clog things up. It'll be third down and long. Lance Moore also there as well. These guys are working well in tandem. If you watch this side of the play, here's the pulling of the left and right guard. They do a nice job, but, but see 94 right there, Ryan Waters, he doesn't get blown up on the play. He gets blocked, but he keeps his outside shoulder up the field, and he doesn't allow him to push too far out, and that allows the rest of the pursuit to get there, and running on the side of Ryan Waters really hasn't been so good here in the fourth quarter. He's made some very nice plays. You might see Blue Springs work on the other side a little bit. Third down and five now for the Wildcats. Wentworth going deep, looking for Barge. He's got it. Josh Barge. Touchdown, Blue Springs. Josh Barge. Eighty-four yards for Kelly Donahoe and the Wildcats as they recapture the lead here. How about third and long, laying it up. Josh Barge gets to the football. Derek Greaves, a cornerback, just didn't get to the football in time. With the win, they decided to throw the ball up. Justin Whitworth throws the ball downfield. Barge with his 11 touchdown pass reception. Scores for Blue Springs. And just when you thought Fort Osage was getting the momentum, starting to settle in with this lead, big play, Blue Springs ranked number four in the metro area gets the big play and kelly donahoe the old quarterback you don't know what to go to you put the ball in your quarterback's hand and say let's go deep one on one and probably nothing you know on third and medium third and long and backed up situations one of the reasons why you throw that pass is if it gets intercepted it's as good as a punt if it's incomplete you really don't lose anything if you get interference or a catch you can make a big play and that's what it happened we have timeout on the field as we take a look here, Stan. There you see Derek Greaves just slips on the play, and what could have been a big game at 35, say 40 yards, turns into a touchdown with the cornerback down on the ground. There's nothing he could do to stop Josh Barge. You see the offensive line play right there, just burying everyone. And then the bomb is thrown over their heads. No penetration gives the quarterback plenty of time to step up and throw. 
and watch how happy they are. Here's the quarterback saying, I think I have myself a touchdown. And the old quarterback says, we're back in the lead, boys. Let's go for two. Let's get back on schedule. Two-point conversion try. Give it to Tuggle. He gets inside the pylon. It is a two-point conversion. So it's now 35-28 Blue Springs, 7-12 to play. Here in your fourth quarter as it's a three-play, 89-yard drive for the Wildcats as they regain the lead here on the road. They get the two-point conversion to get back on schedule. They're back up by seven points in a high-scoring affair. Third and long touchdown. Nice play there by Josh Barge. And not much change in the reaction there by head coach Jerry Boyce. Says, we've been here before, guys. We've been behind by 14 once. We've been behind by 13 once. We've been behind by seven. A lot of the time, we're okay. And say what, this is what playoff football is all about. It might be cold. It might be icy. But these guys are playing some exciting football. Well, when you've been coaching for five decades, I think you've seen pretty much everything. So, Coach Boyce, nothing's going to really surprise him out there. They need one of those heart monitors or something. You know, one time that Pat Jones used to be the head coach of Oklahoma State, they put one of those on him for a bowl game, and it was like off the charts. People thought he was going to have a heart attack. They don't realize that that's what's happening inside the coach all the time. Even the calm ones like Jerry Boyce on the outside, not much fire. But if you get up close to his face and he starts talking to you, you can see the fire. I've felt it a couple of times. <laughs> In your Kansas State Wildcat days, kick is away. Fielded on a couple of hops by Justin Buckaloo. Across the 30 and taken down at the 31-yard line. Good field position for the Fort Osage Indians. Now down by a margin of 7, 35-28, 7.04 to play in your ball game. Okay, I mean, this is a little game of momentum back and forth. And you just got to throw that completely out of your mind and just execute your plays. Fort Osage at this time really is their offense working better than they have all game. They've got two completions which led to two giant plays. They've been able to run the ball outside a little bit in addition to running it up the middle. Their fullback has had some success in the trap game. So they really have a lot of plays they can look into. What they want to do right now though is get a first down or two and move out of this muddy area so they can get some better footing and take it the rest of the way down the field. Trips to the far side. The lone setback is the fullback, Bruce Harris, is now Braden goes in motion and he runs right into the quarterback and then slips down for a loss on the play. Josh Hawkins there in the backfield along with Scorpio Horn. Be second down and long. Just a misstep. They had the running back in motion. It's just one of those plays where the guys did not get in a correct position. Probably the motion, you see the motion right there. He probably didn't go quite far enough over to get the football. He's supposed to come over to the outside of the quarterback and slip inside of him. And he just shortened up his motion right there. And one of the reasons is with the field conditions, your stride is not quite as big. And now we got the moisture coming down again. It's not only the wind, it's also the precipitation. Not only the wind is cold, it's Brayton spinning and diving up. He'll take it to the 39-yard line. It'll be third down and about two yards to go, but an electrifying run by Jeremy Braden there. As he really breaks off a lot of tackles, Stan. He does a nice job. He gets the ball in the option this time around the left side. He gets right upfield, slips the tackle right there of the defender. Josh Hawkins gets a hand on his shoulders, but that's not enough. You gotta get shoulder pads on this man to knock him down. Now, you got third and fairly short. It's two down territory. If you don't make it on third down, as long as you don't lose a lot of yards, you go for it on fourth down as well. Third down and two from the 39. Gearhart in motion. Braden in trouble, gonna be thrown for a loss. Great penetration by the Wildcats as coming in there was Earl Jack. Earl Jack on short yardage plays does a nice job of fighting off his block. Usually he makes a stunt to the inside, but he has the agility to step back outside. The big guy was limping a little while ago. But if you see this play, he is right in the backfield. There is no room to run. They did a good enough job of stopping him that they've got to think about punting the football here. Fourth down and four. They will punt the football, it appears here. Jeremy Braden. He's going to run. Now he's going to run. He has some room to the near side. The first down by Braden. A 
to the midfield strike as he's pushed out at his own 48-yard line. Stan, you knew it was coming, didn't you? Well, I was going to say that they uh, watch for the fake here. Against this win, they don't really punt, but they've got their star running back as the punter. So what he does is give the look of a punt for just a second. It made it a little bit harder because of the snap, but the defense is running downfield, getting ready for punt return formation, and you give your best running back an opportunity to run on a fake. Really a nice play call. They have so much trouble. They're 0 for 9 on third down conversion. In obvious third down situations, they have not been able to block Earl Jack. So they say, forget Earl Jack. Let's get in punt formation and take on a few different guys. Chris Johnson is now checked in at eye back for Fort Osage. As Gearhart in motion and just a quarterback keeper. Good line surge as he'll get about four yards on the play. Nothing fancy there. Just the quarterback sneak, Stan. That's really a good play, especially if you got a guy who's physical enough. You see the defenders play an even front. What that means is there's no one over the center's nose. You got a linebacker off the ball. And the defensive tackles, they're thinking about getting upfield. So a lot of times you got a natural hole, especially if you do it on first down. Now, if you do it on third and one, the quarterback's going to get killed. But on first down, a nice play to gain some yardage. Officially given five, second down and five. Jeremy Graydon back in at the tailback slot. Play action fake. Mo Gunning. And the catch is made by Ryan Waters for a first down at the 34-yard line in Blue Springs territory. The tight end with the catch. That was that guy can make some plays. I tell you, we saw him catch the ricochet on an interception and rolling to his left. And Mo can fire the football accurately. That was good coverage on that play. There was no problem. He fit the football in just where it needed to be. And Brian Waters continues to make big plays in this ball game. You see the first downs. Fort Osage has been a team in the second half to find the rhythm on offense. First and 10 from the 34 as Buckaloo in motion behind the set. This is Brayton, and he's cut down, shooting through number 26, Paul Defoe, a 4.0 student with a very intelligent play there, grabbing the legs of Brayton, and he'll lose about a half yard here. Yeah, watch Paul Defoe get upfield. Number 26 will come darting into your picture behind the block. Boom, right there. See number 50? He pulled on the play. That's Tad Seamer who pulled, and when he pulled, the linebacker has two choices. Normally he runs to the outside, but this time he took a chance. Defoe said, I'm gonna follow that linebacker up, and I think I can make the tackle before the running back gets away from me. Second down and 11 now. Dive play to the fullback, and Harris motors down to the 32-yard line, a pickup of four. It's going to be third down and long, like third and seven yards to go as the clock under three minutes to play. And Fort Osage down by seven. Now, Jerry Boyce, we talked a lot about his career, but these are a couple critical calls. He's an offensive-minded guy, and it's a tough situation. Against the wind, third and seven. Now, he knows he has two downs to make that seven or eight yards. But really, his season is on the line in this situation. Play action fake. Mo going over the middle. And the pass broken up as they were looking for Marco C. Pavola, Pavolida. And it's incomplete. And it's going to be fourth down and seven. Watch number seven, Troy Pike, get back in the coverage. He was not faked out because it was third and long. He's right there in coverage to knock down a pass. That's the same post pattern that they completed earlier. But when we saw the completion earlier, it was on an earlier down. When they faked the running play, the linebackers came up and had to defend the run, leaving the middle of the field wide open. Great recognition by Troy Pike. Not only that it was a pass play, but thinking ahead. He had to know in his mind, I'm not going to take the play action fake. It's third and long. If they run the football, I'll be a little bit slow to the ball. What I need to do is make sure I drop back into coverage. And he was right there. That would have been a completion if the linebacker wouldn't have been back there in the play. Don't forget more state playoff action coming up on Metro Sports quarterfinal action next week, November 17th. As that'll be a Monday game. We'll air Friday night, the 17th, 7 o'clock is our high B high school game of the week. And the Kansas State Finals game in Lawrence. Either we'll leave the North or we'll leave the South taking on Manhattan or Hutchinson. That'll be Saturday live, 11 a.m., November 18th. Only on Metro Sports, only on cable. Look at the bench now, no coach, they're throwing them down the ground. They're willing to suck it up and get a little cold air on their body to help their defense out. Here it is, 
fourth and long. Fourth down and seven. Ball at the 33 of Blue Springs. Option pitch to the short side. Brady is going to be cut down shy. Taken down at the 28. Blue Springs football on downs as the bench celebrating for Kelly Donahoe's team. Coach Boyce is trying to trick him on the play, thinking they're thinking pass. Remember how fast the linebacker ran out of there? I'm sure he's reacting to that. If the linebackers are playing off that much, I think we can get the option to the outside. But the thing is, they ran it to the short side of the football field, and that means there's less room. You got that boundary right there that acts as an extra defender. And even though it was a little gap, there was not enough room to turn the corner. So now they must stuff them very quickly to get any chance to get the football back before this game ends. 2.13 to go in your ball game. Blue Springs with the football, leading by seven. Running play, Tuggle, breaking to the outside. Andrew Tuggle continues his huge night. Down the sidelines, still on his feet. 10, five, touchdown. Blue Springs, no flags. Fifth touchdown of the night for the sophomore, Andrew Tuggle. Ford Osage sold out trying to make the tackle in the backfield. And if you do that, this guy might make you pay if you don't make the tackle immediately. Andrew Tuggle making it a beautiful run down the left side. And the crowd is exiting the stadium. This one is over on a first down play. He bounces the ball to the outside. And he's not just satisfied to gain a first down. He's not satisfied just to make it a big run. He makes it an outstanding run. He's the headliner from the first play to the last as the big play scoring machine tonight. 71 yards on the touchdown run as Watkins tacks on the extra point. 42-28, Blue Springs, 158 to go in the ball game. Andrew Tuggle with five touchdowns on the night. One, one receiving, four running. Andrew Tuggle takes the football out. Now you see everyone up for Ford Osage. He just reads the block, breaks a tackle, turns to the outside, says, I got a little speed. Let me show you my speed down the sideline. I think we got a first down. We're in great shape. But wait a second. Watch this little move. Jump in between two guys, keep his bounce, take off down the field. 72 yards and a touchdown. Look at this. Just in the backfield, patiently running, following his fullback, and then showing the speed. The guy has great patience. It's unbelievable to think that this running back, Andrew Tuggle, came into the game with just over 500 yards rushing for the season. Tonight, after that touchdown run, he has 317 yards rushing and four touchdowns. Unbelievable. Add the 43-yard touchdown reception, and this guy has made it happen as they get a chance to move on in the 5A playoffs in what has been a very tough game. But anytime you see a man run for 300 yards, you know they probably lit up the scoreboard, and sure enough, they got 42 points in a bad weather situation. Yeah, Stan, they came in averaging 28.7. They put up 42 on the board. And here's the kick. Taken by Chris Johnson near the 30, and then slips down near the 32-yard line. 153 to go for Jerry Boyce. And his Indians down now 42-28. Did a nice job coming back. I mean, things really didn't look good for them throughout the night. Tuggle's been putting pressure on them from start to finish, but somehow they had the lead for a while here in the fourth quarter. Getting ahead by one point, but remember a third and long bomb changed everything in the direction of Blue Springs. Out of the shotgun formation for Talamo now, first and 10. They'll keep it on the quarterback draw. And move it out to the 37 yard line, a gain of five on the play, second down and five. Letting clock stops as they get a new football out there. Now they'll rewind it in motion here. On second down, Mo firing, and the pass is caught by Steve Gearhart for a first down up near the midfield stripe. 
officials will take an official's timeout to move the chains. The clock stops during that period of time. And right now, Florida State saying, hey, it's not over. Let us try to move the ball down the field and get an onside kick. Very unlikely. You can see the weather is changing for the worse as we get later into the evening. The rain is coming down right into their face. Now flags are pitched in here. Yeah, there's some movement in high school football. If you get in the neutral zone, it's a penalty. Dead ball, encroachment, offense. Repeat, first down. The width of the football is called the neutral zone. And while in college and the pros, guys can get in the neutral zone as long as they get out before the ball snapped. In high school, if anyone penetrates the neutral zone, it's immediately stopped and called a penalty. And this time, Fort Osage had guys line up too close to the ball. First and 15 now out of the shotgun as they move it back to the 45-yard line. Quick pass. See Pavolida can't bring it in. And it will be now second and 15. Clock down to 109. Well, maybe the end of his career, but he still has the same fire. This time he's letting the show outside a little bit more. Second down and 15. Looking deep. This pass intercepted by Troy Pike for Blue Springs. And he runs it back to his own 45-yard line. And now with 59.6 seconds to go, Blue Springs will go to 10-1. They'll face the winner of the Rockhurst Liberty Ball game on Monday. Well, it's really appropriate that Troy Pike gets the interception right there because in the last possession when Fort Osage is moving down the field, the third down play that he made is one of the key plays in this football game. That pass would have been completed over the middle. It would have been first down for Fort Osage. It would have been in scoring territory. He gets back, knocks the football away, and really stops Fort Osage. And here he is in the next possession, stopping them with the interception. Now flags will stop this play as quarterback just went down with the football. Well, There's movement by the left guard before the ball snapped, so it's a dead ball foul and be a five-yard penalty against Blue Springs. They'll have a tough chore in their, their next ball game with either Liberty or Rockhurst. Well, Blue Springs beat Liberty earlier this year, 28-21 at Liberty, but they did lose to Rockhurst. 21 to 14 at PB Stadium in a very close ball game. So they've been right with them in both those ball games. Kelly Dono's team district champions this year, winners of the Suburban Big Eight Championship for 2000. He's won four straight now conference titles, three straight at Raytown South, and now is fourth straight in the Suburban Big Eight. Inside handoff, the fullback Joey Vaughn still fighting hard and then taken down near the 41 yard line. It's going to be now second down and 13 yards to go as the clock winding out here. It's been a nice start to the playoff season. I mean, you always love playoff football, no matter what level. And the Missouri high school playoffs are very competitive, and this has been. Nice representation of what playoff football should be all about. High scoring, competitive, back and forth. And excellent athletes making plays throughout the evening. And now the quarterback will go to a knee, and that should do it for our ball game here. Good ball game tonight by both these squads, Stan. We saw Blue Springs get up. Fort Osage fought back. Kelly Donahoe getting the Gatorade bat. I don't think I'd want the Gatorade bath tonight. It is a nasty cold night, but Kelly is a tough guy. He'll laugh it off. And Jerry Boyce making that final walk to shake hands after 40 years of coaching. And what a tremendous gentleman he is. And future of coaching there. And then one of the coaching legends bowing out, Kelly Donahoe and Jerry Boyce shaking hands. Well, that's one of the nice things about coaching is it doesn't matter what age. And sometimes you get the old guys battling the young guys. And it, it's something that you, you get a real respect level. I mean, how does Kelly Donahoe 
compete with a, a guy like Jerry Boyce. There's nothing else. You can't go play racquetball together or basketball or something. Jerry Boyce was a, a great player at Central Missouri State. He's in their Hall of Fame. Donahoe was a starting quarterback for KU, but as coaches, they're on the an equal side, playing field, and it's a heck of a battle. And both guys do an outstanding job with their offense, as seen by the final score. In bad weather, you still see a 42 to 28 score. These guys do a nice job of developing their offensive units. So congratulations to the Blue Springs Wildcats. They'll move on to the 5A quarterfinals as they move their record to 10 and 1 and Fort Osage ends their season at 8 and 3. Stay tuned our Hy-Vee post game wrap up show is coming up next here on the Hy-Vee High School Game of the Week on Metro Sports. The High School Game of the Week here on Metro Sports has been brought to you by Hy-Vee. Your Kansas City Metro Farmers Insurance agents including Dave King, Mike Braun, Jay Greco and Douglas Miller. By AMC Theaters, Culligan, Water for Life, and UnderTheScope.com, Realize the Dream. Rain falling, a miserable night, cold, wet, but an exciting football game. Blue Springs rallies to win it 42-28 to advance to the Missouri State quarterfinals. We really caught a break in this game because this bad weather that you're seeing in your picture now really was only there in the fourth quarter. During the ball game, it was dry other than the field, and the players really put on a show. The footing was somewhat suspect, but the guys made do and made some big plays tonight. And the guy making the most big plays is our player of the game, sophomore Andrew Tuggle. That's Our right. Player of the game brought sophomore. to you by your Kansas City Metro Farmers Insurance agents. A sophomore making the big play in the first round of the playoffs. Over 300 yards rushing in the ball game, five touchdowns, and the Wildcats move on to the next round behind the great running of their running back. But let's don't forget the great blocking of number 40, Joey Vaughn, who led the way throughout the ball game from his fullback position. Time now for our Brandsmart play of the game. Watch football all season long from the best seats in the house on a big screen from Brandsmart. And this was the capper, 72 yards by Andrew Tuggle as this one put it out of reach and it made it 41-28. He scored on the first play of the ball game on a swing pass. And here near the end of the ball game, up by seven, he ices the ball game with the long run on the first play of the possession. Congratulations, Kelly Donahoe and the Blue Springs Wildcats. Our brand smart play of the game. The best seats in the house found only at the big screen store. That is brand smart as the coaches exchanging pleasantries. Talamo shaking hands with Kelly Donahoe. 42 28. Stan, some final comments. Well, Kelly Donahoe's team is very fine. There's no doubt about it. They didn't count on Tuggle being a 300 yard rusher at all. That's an added weapon that they have, but they're going to have to play their best football because if you're going to play a Liberty Ball Club or a Rockhurst in the next round, it's going to be some very tough football, but I think they're up to the task. This win was a, a very nice win, and I think they learned something. It wasn't easy. It started out easy, but they fell behind, had to fight back in the fourth quarter, and when you're on such short weeks like they are now, during playoffs, you don't get much rest. Having a comeback is really important to put in your resume. And we wish Jerry Boyce the best in his retirement as his coaching career ends. 42-28, Blue Springs wins it. For Stan Weber, Kevin White saying goodnight from Fort Osage Stadium.